We're living on a disc floating through space with a tiny sun. <laughs> All right, we're live. I believe we are. All right, sweet. So if you all can hear me, uh, I'm sorry, but uh, we're going to go ahead and get started with this. Uh, is that right, Fight? Are, are, are we are we good to go? Yeah, we are just... good to go. We are all live. Um, oh, Brainy's running a bit late, but he will join us. All right, so the rocket has not exploded. That's no, what I'm hearing. As far as we're aware. Okay. So uh, um, let's go ahead and get two. started. Uh, welcome, everyone. Welcome, welcome. I am your moderator, Red's Rhetoric. Uh, yes, I know exactly what you're what you're thinking. They could have found someone a lot better than me, but I'm all they got. Exactly. So, uh, Fight, thank you for literally scraping the bottom of the barrel and uh, picking me as your moderator. I appreciate it. No worries. I've got to have my standards somewhere, haven't I? Yeah, and, and unfortunately, those standards are very much underground. So, uh, yeah, so here's how it's going to work. I am not going to be involved in this little debate. Uh, I am just going to be moderating. So I'm going to go ahead and just do the little intro, then we'll get started. So welcome, everyone. Uh, Red Strider here, moderator, as I previously said. Uh, tonight, we're having a debate between Fight the Flat Earth and Breaking Down the Wall of Lies. So I'm actually going to go backwards here. So... Breaking down the wall of lies. Please tell us who you are, promote your stuff, that kind of thing. Yeah, I've been researching the uh, shape of the Earth and the uh, size of the Earth for about over a year now at least. And uh, started up the channel only recently, done a few videos, uh, got a lot of stuff in my playlist, uh, just the sort of stuff that's brought me to the conclusions of where I am today. Uh, you know, that's all really. <clears throat> All right, sounds good. Fight the Flat Earth, even though people already know who the hell you are. Uh, ju let's just pretend that they don't, and you're introducing yourself for the very first time. Hey guys, I am Fight the Flat Earth. Um, I got into this whole um, Flat Earth shape of the world debate, well, only a few months ago, to be honest. I was following it, following it for about a year, but I started up my channel in November. Um, I think at this point I've learned all the arguments that there is to hear from flat earthers and i'm interested to see if breaking down the wall of eyes has something i haven't heard before i'm going to try and be as nice as i can um i don't like repeating myself and i don't like being constantly interrupted i will give respect as long as it's given to me um but i hope this is a, a decent friendly conversation and we can we can get through a bunch of stuff um i'd like you to go first and basically tell me why you think the earth is the shape you think it is Okay, I've prepared a little uh, beginning statement, if that's okay. Absolutely, go ahead. Yeah, I'll try and stick to the, the points of what the, the thing is about, obviously the shape of the earth. Uh, we'll start off. All right, before before we get, get on, I'm going to need both of you to understand something because there is a tendency for this to go uh, downhill pretty quickly and where it becomes a train wreck. We're going to try and avoid that, so... Um, I'm going to stay out of it, like I said, but the very moment I say gavel, that means everybody shuts up, and I'll go ahead and allocate time to whoever I think needs to finish their statement or go, that kind of thing. So, so long as I have agreement from both of you on that, we should be good to go. Yeah. All right, perfect. Uh, so uh, I'm just going to call you break from now on. Uh, the floor is yours. Okay. Uh, firstly, let me say that we can only base our own ideas on the shape of the earth with the information to which we are presented and to which we can verify using our own senses. There's an old saying, seeing is believing, and for the most, that is at the very heart of this problem. Let me tell you a most recent true story. Even since a child, I have had the fortune of seeing unusual things in the sky, so when I'm presented with such images later in life, they do not have the ability to bemuse me the same as they might others, such as the moon moving backwards in degrees and height and then forwards again. That was recently. Then later on, after watching for Orion's constellation to disappear for the second night in a row, something even more absurd was to happen. 
On the complete opposite side of the sky, a similar very big alignment of three stars begun to move. This was witnessed not only by me, but by three other persons. From north to south, the three stars closed the distance between themselves exactly, with the bottom two crisscrossing as if they were going to collide, but then moved away until they disappeared, leaving one which then moved back up to retake its original position high up in the night sky. Less than two hours later, the two other so-called stars had returned, but now they made the shape of an equilateral triangle. Strange, but true. When speaking of this matter after, one person said, I've never seen anything like that before, but because he saw it with his own two eyes, he was convinced of its happening. So it's the same for the masses, sadly. The only way they can ever change their minds is to see with their own two eyes, and that is something NASA and nearly every institution worldwide is doing their damnedest to prevent. Let me further expound. You would think that after 60 years since NASA's beginning in 1958, we over 135 shuttle missions and over 300 astronauts flying into so-called space, according to NASA's own statistics up until July the 21st, 2011. And that's not even including all the more recent space flights and astronauts entering Earth's orbit. That there would be some kind of a claimed or conclusive evidence of the shape of our Earth. But incredibly, there is still no clear, concise or even close to accurate data provided by the authorities worldwide on the matter in question. So, we then have to ask the serious question, why not? Why is there no conclusive evidence of the shape of the Earth? Why is there no conclusive data to show people? Why is there no proof, no unequivocal, no unmistakable, no undisputable, no contrivable, undeniable proof at all? to be found from any whatsoever of the institutions, nor has there ever been any recorded standard or benchmark as to the shape of our Earth and its actual size. Instead, we are presented with nothing more than primitive archetypes and countless half-truths, all accumulating to nothing more than mystery, and yet some still wonder why conspiracies emerge. Think about it. Constantly bombarded by fake imagery, and nothing but assumptions, again, no actual proof, all very cleverly concocted by a small group of pseudo-scientists all working hand in hand with NASA and other major space agencies from all around the world who are at the very root of the lies, all part of an elite group with the very same goal to keep secret the shape and size of our Earth to the very nature of our own universe and reality and also more than likely our true history. TV, all channels, news, documentary channels such as history, nature and universe, and even ancient aliens promoting the globe model. Children being educated in pseudoscience theories constantly, not science fact. The nonsensical ball off at the heart of it all. Fashionable books and magazines all presenting the same lies concerning the shape of the earth, including all major newspapers. Anyone who questions the shape of the Earth according to the institutions is being classed as a raven loony, a conspiracy theorist, foolish or uneducated, not understanding true science, which is downright ridiculous when it is because when we are presented with a ball of madness and gravity, the pseudoscience theory surrounding it made up from only theory, no fact whatsoever, never proven, based upon Again, theory and simply there to muddy the waters. That is when we begin to question the ridiculous nature or root of the pseudo-scientific nonsense to which the new breed of quirks or quacks, whichever you prefer, are telling us their truth when even they themselves know it is nothing short of lunacy. Not one image have I been able to find, whether picture or video, on the whole of the web or in a book or a newspaper that could help me decide what is the shape of the earth and that is a fact. So until I can find or I'm shown conclusive proof of the shape of the earth along with its true size, we will be unable to accept all the constant half-truths that have become nothing more than the usual junk we are all accustomed to. And that's final. Thank you. 
Okay. Um, right, well, I suppose I'll do an open argument rather than going through your stuff straight away. Uh, I think the Earth is... No, I know the Earth is a globe because the science doesn't lie and the science does work and the physics and the maths all add up to comport to the reality that we live on a globe. There is more than sufficient evidence to suggest we live on a globe. The curve is measurable. Um, gravity, whatever you want to call it, a downward acceleration, does exist. Um, we can see things in the universe. You can try and tell me that there's a, um, a massive conspiracy amongst all of the space agencies, but to do that, you would have to personally prove to me that every single video and picture from space is fake because if just one of them is real just one one single image or video then it blows any flat earth out of the water um during my life i've studied physics i've studied engineering i've personally verified that the maths and the physics work as part of your degree is not just to sit around doing equations it's to practically demonstrate the things that you have learnt to be fact and to show that you are able to work with the physics of the universe that we live in. All engineering principles rely on the physics and the maths that we're told is true. And if they weren't true, then the engineering wouldn't work. Um, there is so much to suggest that the earth isn't flat. And I have never seen anything to suggest that the earth is flat that I couldn't pick apart in less than five minutes. So I think from here, I would like for you to start with your biggest proof or your, your biggest evidence as to why you think the Earth is flat. And um, we'll go from there. Uh, just mic check for me real quick. Hey, Bra Bra Brainy, how you doing? Yeah, I was a little late to the party, but I'm here. That's cool, man. Do you just want to quickly do an introduction? Hello? Um, yeah, hey everybody, Brainy Beaver here. You can find me at Brainy Beaver channel and uh, I'm happy to really pr feel privileged to be invited to these debates and help moderate. And just like Red said, I'm going to try to stay the hell out and uh, I'm, I'm both good and bad at that, but I'm going to just back out and let you guys do your thing. Cool. We've both just gone through our opening arguments and um, I'm... I've been listening to you, cool. but uh, I was just busy with something else. So I'm here. I'm totally in it. All right. No worries. Okay. Um, over to you, Breaking. I'm just going to call you Break if that's okay. It's a lot easier. That's okay. And, and you can just call me fight, all right? Okay, thank you. Uh, hey, Craig, I'd like to ask you, I know you've just said to me to present some some proof, my best evidence. Uh, what, do you mind me asking you a question first? Go ahead. Yeah, you, you said there that science doesn't lie, okay? Mm -hmm. You made, made that statement. Uh, I don't think it's, it's so much about science doesn't lie. I think what the problem here is, is we have... Uh, we have gravity that is meant to support on the ball, okay? Support, keep everybody upside down in Australia, New Zealand, Papua New Guinea, whatever you want to say. Or if you turn the, up, the North Pole upside down and say it's the opposite way around, so we're upside down, it doesn't really matter about the North, East, South or West. But the very fact of gravity, right, do you understand the difference between a theory and a fact? Absolutely, 100%. And gravity is a fact, yes. not okay. a theory. Okay, so even the scientists accept gravity as an assumption of a scientist. Assumption, do you know the difference between assumption and fact? Yes, um, I would 100% disagree that gravity is accepted as an assumption. It's a demonstrable, provable, measurable thing. Okay, so can I, can I just say for all the viewers that are out there, uh, gravity itself that they want to use to tell you that we're upside down on a ball and the trillions of tons of oceans and seas don't pour off that ball. That is nothing more than the assumption of scientists, okay? I know the difference between assumption and fact. I know the difference between theory and fact, okay? If the scientists come out with and they said, look, here's a science fact, but even the scientists themselves collectively, every single one of them all know that there is no way to prove gravity. It's never been proven to this day. It was the assumption of a group of scientists or a single scientist, and they have run with that, okay? So I'm gonna rest my case on the one about science. Uh, well, science. Um, 
I, 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 I have to disagree with you that gravity has never been proven because it has been proven every time they perform a Cavendish experiment, especially when they do it in a vacuum chamber. Okay. All you, all you um, need to do to prove that gravity is a thing is to prove that mass attracts mass. And I've done that personally on many occasions. Okay. Can I, can I say I looked online for, we're talking about gravity. I've looked online. I've looked at scientists who argue they cannot even decide as to whether gravity is a pushing force or a pulling force. That's scientists, okay? Let me just point out something, Craig. Me and you are pretty uneducated, okay, compared to the scientists that are at the top of the crop. Would you agree? I wouldn't say I'm uneducated. I've got two degrees and three HNCs, five A-levels and 14 GCSEs. I would count myself as quite educated. Okay. Um, I, I am equivalent. Yeah. In, in in fact, I have more qualifications than Bill Nye. So I well, would say that, that I am pretty, that, pretty qualified. Obvious. That's obvious because Bill Nye is just another liar. Okay, and he, he, he's, he's, he's an engineer and I've seen him do the maths personally. Yeah, it's okay. But, well, I, I would tend to disagree with you on that. Bill Nye is just a, a lying guy, okay? I've watched so much of Bill Nye, but not, not to get away from what I originally asked you there. Would you say that me and you are pretty uneducated when it comes to the experts in the fields to do with particle physics, to do with gravity, to do with a, a, what's out there in the universe? Would you say that regardless of all your degrees? Or I, whatever, I would say that um, there are people with more specialised educations than me because that's how education works. Okay. Um, I, I wouldn't say that I am less educated than them. Than them. I am educated in different things. Okay. I didn't Would study you... particle physics. I didn't do anything else. Once okay. I got my degrees, I didn't need to go any further because within the field that I was studying, I needed, I knew everything that I needed to. Okay. If I wanted to be a particle physicist, I would have gone on to do degrees in that. So yes, I understand your point. They are more specialized in what they do in the same way that a plumber that comes out to your house knows more about plumbing than you and I. So, okay. The, the only point, with all due respect, the only point I'm trying to get across is, would you trust the scientists that are leading experts in their field? Well, that's been demonstrated the way to go, that you would trust people that are experts in their field. Like, okay. for, in, for instance, going back to my plumber um, analogy, would you trust that a plumber is an expert in his field to come and fix your plumbing? Hey, yeah, of course. Well, and, you know, and, the, and, and then the, the, why would you not trust someone yeah. who has trained and studied to be in particle physics? Right. The point I'm making there is that even the top leading scientists, Craig, would disagree with you. In what? Okay? They know fine well that gravity is just an assumption, that gravity has never been proven. And see this stuff about a vacuum chamber? That, that's never proven gravity at all. Okay? Well, uh, uh, well, again, scientists know that gravity is proven because scientists know that gravity isn't a theory. Gravity itself is a mathematical law. It is something that is measurable, calculatable and predictable. We can use the mathematical law of gravity to calculate and predict everything that is going on. Um, I 100% disagree with you that scientists say what, what you've said about scientists saying about gravity. Scientists know that gravity is a fact. Um, I will grant you that the complete intricacies of how gravity interacts with our universe and what the difference with, um, you know, and how the bending of space time and that works, there's still things that we are working on. But that doesn't change the fact that the theory of gravity is the supporting body of evidence to back up what gravity is. Gravity itself, the proof that there is a downward accelerating force of 9.8 meters per second squared, that is a thing. You can call it what you want, but that itself is a mathematical law that we cannot move away from. Okay, what, what I'm trying to point out here is that from what I've read uh, over the web, from what I have investigated, that even the scientists themselves argue amongst themselves that they cannot decide and they cannot prove that gravity is a pushing, for, uh, sorry, a pushing force or a pulling force, okay? Now, I tried to get several white papers on these things, which for those, those of you that don't know what white paper is, this is stuff that scientists write, okay, and it's documented. It's called a white paper, you know, specialists in the field. So when I've read these things, and I can see clearly that there's a major dispute with top scientists 
that still cannot decide as to whether it's a simple pushing force or a pulling force. And as regards mass attracts mass, okay, there's, there's the, uh, the experiment that's based on a trampoline as if our universe is a trampoline. Have you well, seen that? Yeah, online? that's not an experiment. That's a two-dimensional representation of a three-dimensional phenomenon. That's not what? an experiment. That, ah, that... Okay, so what's the phenomenon? The phenomenon, the natural phenomenon, is that there is um, a, a force, a downward acceler well, a force that accelerates downwards at 9.8 meters per second squared. What that demonstration was trying to show is how that relates to the warping of space time and how technically when something has a large mass, it creates what's referred to as a gravity well. And other things of a lesser mass will move towards that gravity well. The same way as when that trampoline, they put a big weight in the middle, all the marbles would move towards it. Now, th again, that is just a two-dimensional representation of a three-dimensional warping of space-time. Okay. Uh, what I would like to say as regards that, I watched it and I watched the, sci uh, the science class guy or whatever he was, whatever he's qualified in, I take it, it would be science and he's teaching students. Every single part of his so-called 2D experiment or his uh, demonstration failed, okay? The same as it's a, it's a failed idea, a failed assumption to actually think that just because we are presented with things that are up there in the sky that they need to be supported by anything, okay? Okay, if I can respond to that, um, it, 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 it didn't okay, it, it, it didn't fail. Um, it showed exactly what it was meant to show. The reason why it didn't show a constant orbit and stuff is because in that um, representation, there is friction and everything that you have to take into account. When things are traveling through space, they don't have to, you know, come against those forces. There are permutations from other gravitational forces as they go around the orbit in the solar system, but they're insignificant in regards to actually what their orb orbit is. So that... Um, demonstration it didn't fail it showed exactly what it needed to it's not a great demonstration because you can't really represent three dimensions in two dimensions you know the same way that you can't really visualize what a tesseract is because that's a four-dimensional shape that we're trying to visualize with our three-dimensional brains so you cannot perfectly represent a warping of space-time in two dimensions, but for the purposes of that, exp um, not experiment, sorry, for the purposes of that demonstration, it did exactly what it needed to do. Okay, what I would say is regards that is, is that it showed clearly that the mass of the sun would have drew us in long ago. It would have drew in Venus. It would have drew in uh, Mercury. It would have drew in Mars. It would have drew in our moon. It would have bumped us okay, up. Okay, again, it didn't... Sh them, the only reason that demonstration would have showed things moving in is because the friction of the marbles moving on the lycra sheet would have caused them to slow down and move in. Now, when you're in space, again, there's no friction or anything stopping you when you are traveling with these velocities. Now, the way to think about an orbit is, yes, Earth and Mars and Venus, they are being pulled towards the sun. But because they're traveling at such a velocity, they are missing the sun and constantly being pulled towards it so they don't they wouldn't just fall towards the sun, the sun like that demonstration showed because there isn't those restrictions of friction and everything in, in space to stop that velocity every action has to have an equal and opposite reaction and once an object's in motion it can't be stopped unless there's a force applied to it you know these are the basic laws of conservation of momentum so that explains why in space, no Earth, Mars, Venus and all the other planets wouldn't just fall into the sun because of their velocity and their orbit. OK, I, I, I still, as far as I'm concerned and, uh, and from what I've read, I do not absolutely 100 percent agree with you on that. I'm going to just point out something very quickly. Anyone that wants to go on to Google, do a search, uh, top 10 theories. OK, do you want to know the, the, what it comes up with? Heliocentrism. Copernicus 1543, a scientific theory, okay? Yep. And could you define a scientific theory for me? Yeah, scientific theory is the assumption of a scientist, never proven. No, that's not what a scientific theory is. A scientific theory is very different to the common vernacular usage of a theory. A scientific theory is a fact. 
A scientific theory is something that has been um, not only um, experimented on, it's been looked at from every angle possibility, possible. There's been no hypothesis done on it. There, you know, A scientific theory is not the same as a theory. Those are two very, very different things. Okay. Uh, let me point out something, right, because I understand this, and as far as I'm concerned, you're yet to understand this. Uh, with all due respect to you, Craig, if you, can, if you cannot understand the difference between when scientists find a phenomenon, a phenomenon is an unexplained thing that they can see happening, but they can't yeah. understand it and they cannot describe it. They cannot prove it. So what they do is they come up with a theory, they put it in place. And what is a theory? Okay, I've, I've, sorry, I've got to stop you there because you've just completely you know, screwed what the scientific method is. Let me explain to you how it works with gravity, okay? Um, the scientific method, uh, to, to start with, the scientific method doesn't always need to follow all, their, all the steps or follow the same particular order. But the basic breakdown of the scientific theory regarding gravity is this. The observation was that things fall with a constant acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared. So with that observation, you come up with a hypothesis. Now, the hypothesis that was come up with was that, oh, well, there is a force pulling it down. Now, to make that hypothesis into a theory, they perform experiments, they do tests and research, do no hypothesis, they do everything to prove that that is what they have and that proves the wrong word because science isn't doesn't prove things but it, um you do the research stage to determine if your hypothesis was correct then what you're doing when you're researching you're trying to disprove your own hypothesis so they've done all the research and the experiments the cavendish experiment for you know is obviously the main proof of gravity the, the main proof that mass attracts mass um and when i say it's been done in the vacuum chamber i'm not about the things falling I'm on about the Cavendish experiment itself was done in a vacuum chamber to remove any kind of um, you know air or anything it, it, disturbing the experiment. So once they'd done all the research and everything and they concluded that the hypothesis was correct, they then advanced it to a scientific theory. Now, the thing is with science is we don't settle on that. We would constantly try to expand our knowledge. And this is where Stephen Hawking would come in. Um, and, um, sorry, uh, Einstein, not Hawking, sorry, but this is where Einstein would come in and his re-evaluation of what gravity is, um, because he explained that it wasn't necessarily a force. Um, it, it was a warping of space-time, which within Newtonian physics manifests as a force. So science will constantly progress, and if we then come up with a better understanding that will replace the understanding that we've had. And that's the progress of science. So at the right. moment, the understanding of gravity that we have comports with all the experiments and the, the, you know, the hypothesis that was created, there is constant advances of science. We are still trying to understand the nature of space-time in general and how mass actually causes space-time to warp. You know, there, you know, we don't have all the answers, but that's what science is for, is to try and find the answers. It's not to create something and go oh yeah we can make that look real it's to look at the natural world and try and explain it with the tools that we have and if we don't have the correct tools we develop the tools um i want to just quickly go back to one of the things you said about our senses being the things that we trust good lord no your senses are fucking terrible why would you ever trust your senses with anything there is so much better things to use than your senses. A hawk has hearing and vision that's 400 times better than humans. Why would we trust our eyes and our ears when we can develop technology to do that better for us? So back to you. Okay, so just as you said there, the hawk has uh, better hearing and better eyesight, okay? So that's like telling the hawk to mistrust its own senses, okay? We don't need to mistrust our own senses. We just need to see proven fact. And scientists today are part of a, a wide scale worldwide group that are all a, a small elite group that are running about with theory after theory after theory. Let me just point out something here about hypothesis. You mentioned hypothesis, okay? Definition of hypothesis is a supposition or proposed explanation 
yes. proposed explanation made on the basis of limited evidence. It doesn't say absolutely. Entirety. Okay, yeah, absolutely, and so that's that why you then have the research I'm stage saying, to try yeah. and prove or disprove your hypothesis. Yeah. Yeah, so to even finish off that one thing there, made on the basis of limited evidence as a starting point for further investigation. Yes. Okay. Now, for, now at the end of the day, I, I accept the fact that science is not at the end of discovering everything. Of course it isn't, and I understand that. But you see, the problem is here is we have lots of theories in place, lots of hypotheses, in place with limited evidence based on phenomenon that they do not understand and they present that as fact they teach it in schools and as i'll say again list of the top 10 revolutionary scientific theories that are based on hypothesis that are based on limited fact is heliocentrism copernicus 1543 it's top of the list uh, and it again was, you don't get a scientific theory unless you have done all the research and yep. experimentation to try and disprove or prove what your hypothesis is you don't just go with the hypothesis and go oh that's right the thing is you have to make an assumption to begin with something you right. have to that's right but saying. then that's you do saying. the experimentation and my point here is that all the experimentation has been done to prove that there is mass attracting mass okay no Yes, because the Cavendish experiment proves that mass attracts mass. Do you, do you know what the Cavendish experiment is? I've never heard of it. Right. I'm very surprised in that. If you've been looking into flat earth for over a year and you don't know what the Cavendish experiment is, Cavendish experiment is the, the holy grail of mass attracting mass. It was an experiment performed, you know, uh, I'm pretty sure it was the 1800s, maybe, maybe earlier. I'm not entirely sure on the date. I'd have to look that up. But it is an experiment where they prove that mass attracts mass by um, exaggerating the um, attractive force. Now, that experiment wasn't just done once. It's been repeated and improved upon constantly. And it's done pretty much every year. And we always get, I won't say the same value for G, we get a more accurate value for G each time. Once we, we are, you know, we come up with better methods to do the Cavendish experiment, um, we come up with better ways of analyzing the data. So the Cavendish experiment itself, which I would highly recommend you actually do research into, is what we use to prove that mass attracts mass. That isn't the only thing that I can cite that mass attracts mass. There's simple, simple experiments like using a really, really accurate digital scale. Um, and you put something on the digital scale or hang it underneath and then you see what it is, and then you put a massive weight underneath that, and if you've got an accurate enough digital scale, like to a thousandth of a gram, you will see the weight of the object that you are weighing increase based on the gravitational force, because you have added an extra mass underneath it. And it's a tiny, tiny, tiny amount, but again, it proves the hypothesis of mass attracting mass. I probably wouldn't have a scale that would even read that. No, um, I mean, I, I've looked at the... the the only one that I could find uh, within my price range was about £350 for that kind of accuracy. I do intend on getting these things down the line to try and do my own observations, but, um, you know, it's just one of the things that can show that mass attracts mass. Okay. Can, can I ask a, a question? Uh, see, putting aside theory and all the rest of it, yeah. as far as I'm concerned, that's one I'll never agree with you on. As far as I'm concerned, theory is not fact, uh, that it's limited truth. And as we've seen before, time and time and time and time again, and it's never ending. Science, when it moves forward, it says what happened 10 years ago, the experiments he did 10 years ago have been bettered. They understand more. If, if you uh, look at a lot of scientists, what they're saying today, even all those things that they believed 10, 15, 20, 50, 70 years ago, they are understanding the more they find out, the less they know. Okay. Oh now, yes, well, you always find out. Yeah. You know, there's more that you need to know. That's one of the wonderful things about science, right? Well, Matt, yeah, of course it is. It's advancing. But yeah. let me but let me tell you something. As regards NASA and the shape of the Earth, President Obama had a, a speech at NASA's headquarters, and he said that NASA has not advanced in 50 years. Mm. Okay. So what you've got is you've got the root of the problem is NASA and every single image to do with our Earth. 
is nothing but CGI, artist impressions, no real images. Okay. Anyone, anyone can go on to NASA's own website and they can dig through every single image. You will never find original, real images. I can point you that to about five awesome. right now. The okay. 1972 original blue marble taken by um, Eugene Carnan using the Hasselblad camera of the 80 millimeter lens. The Discover satellite taking the uh, image in 2015. The Himawari 8 satellite, which images the entire side of the planet that is on every five seconds that not only manages to track weather patterns and stuff, but in 2015 managed to spot and track a wildfire on the China-Mongolia border, which yeah. would not have been seen by anyone else. And the thanks yeah. to it being tracked by that satellite, were they were able to save a bunch of villages. Oh, so for you to say that there isn't ever, there isn't any proper yeah, images one, of Earth, I completely talking, disagree. That one, that one you're talking, okay. So uh, has Red Rhetoric got a, a thing we can put these pictures up for me to see? Like, the 1972 original blue any, marble any i'd like you to uh, if you can can you pull that picture and show me at my end um, and uh, do, do, do. one else will see it um what would be the best way to pig you there pig is not here i'm just gonna say no we are not going to be able to screen share on this one uh but i do know the images that you're referring to okay you see you see here's here's a major problem straight away because a lot of my stuff is based on images that come from nasa and the ridiculousness of the cgi uh, content that nasa has got in its own base you know so a lot of the stuff tonight uh, I was going to show images well that... you you can screen share and we'll be able to see it on on your uh, you know, the stream will be able to see it on your square. So if you screen share using Google Meets, I can make it show that what you're showing is displayed for everybody else and I'll be able to see it. Also, uh, uh, Fight the Flat Earth, if you want me to add context to a certain thing, uh, I you know, you can just ask, right? Yeah. And uh, so for context on the Himawari picture, um, you did get something wrong that I just wanted to correct you on. It's yeah. one picture every 10 minutes, not 30 seconds. That won't be going up until next year. Well, I thought it was they they did Japan every five seconds and the rest of it every 10. No, it's uh, every 10 minutes. Okay, oh, cool. I stand corrected with that. I apologize. But you know, it's quite a, quite a lot anyway. Um, no problem. I'm but, yeah, back now. If, so, if you, so if you how, want to so screen how, share... How can, I, how, can we, how can we do this? What right. do I... um, if you look at your screen, um, on yep. the, the bottom, there should be a bit where it says um, present now. Yeah. Yep. If you do that, um, okay. I'll make sure that I can see it and everyone else on this on the stream can see it okay okay right hold on two seconds so this will this will actually show what's on my screen then? yeah um it, it'll ask you to to confirm it with a, a share a show the whole screen and then okay. i can make sure that's presented I'll, to everybody i'll do that that's great thank you no worries okay present now okay your entire screen or yeah. it's got a window here. Would that be better? If no, I just just do the entire window? screen, and entire screen. then okay. I should be able to just display it for everybody. Okay, and then if when I'm finished with that, I can take it back off. And yeah, you just press stop presenting and go back to your camera. That's fine. Okay, what I'd like to do is I'd like to just show everyone some of the images that over time have showed to me that 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 the whole reason that I cannot trust anything that NASA says or some of the other big institutions that want to put forward these these uh, ideas of the shape of the earth and also the size of the earth let me just point out a simple oh, oh sorry there we go share let me just point out a simple one straight away uh, I went on to Google Earth I've done a video on it it's on a uh, obviously my YouTube channel and the North Pole is missing from Google Earth, okay? This is part of the ridiculous uh, nature. Hang on, stop, 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 is it stop. not working? All, all, you're, all you're showing right now is just, you. Say, it just says you're present to everyone. I don't know if you're using a dual monitor setup or, or, but you have to drag and drop the image that you're trying to show onto the monitor that you're actually sharing. Right, okay, let me just turn that, let, okay, hold on, so what I need to do is drag and drop Yeah, it, need, it needs to be in the same browser that, that you're using, basically. Oh, right, okay. Because oh. we're not seeing anything. Yeah, it's, right. just, it's just showing your present. Oh. Have you got a multi-screen thing, have you? No, I've got no multi-screen, no. Let me just see, oh, there we go, I can move that, oh no, it's just went big again on me. I don't want to do that. 
right to Shane. Oh, is it actually somewhere on your desktop? Yeah, it's yeah, on you, my desktop. You can just minimize the browser then. Minimize the browser. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Oh, hold on then. Let's just see. Let me just go in here. Two seconds. Sorry, guys. That's all right, mate. Yeah. Um, I'm learning all this stuff as we go along as well. Yeah, well, this is the first time I've ever done this. That's why. Uh, here we go. I'll show you. This is an image, okay, from STS Mission 34 in 1989, okay? Okay. Now, now wait till you see the image of this off, okay? The so-called off that is... Uh, could we agree that what NASA's presenting and what the rest of the world would like to present is a total ball, you know? Almost... Uh, like what you would imagine as what you pointed out, a blue marble. Do we recognize that as the earth that the science world want us to believe we're, we're on? I don't know if you're trying to show the image, but we're just seeing the file, so you're going to oh, have to click no. on it. Oh, I was still talking there. We... No, sorry. That's right. Uh... And he just fucked up. Oh, you still there? He he dragged and dropped it into the browser, which oh, which kicked him out of the tab. Oh. Fuck. <sighs> Flat earthers don't understand geometry, but they also don't understand how the internet works. All right. Or computers in general. We're getting back in. Um, but um, um, I'm just sending them an email to Shex. So far, this has been um, pretty basic, I want to say. Okay, so, um, yeah, about that. So what's your thoughts so far, guys? <laughs> uh, my thought is that I'm biting my tongue and trying not to jump in here. All right, I've just sent in the, the link again. Uh, um, right, so, so, so far, it's... It seems like he, he hasn't actually done much research if he doesn't even know what a Cavendish is, right? Uh, well, I'll save my comments for the very end. Um, I mean, it's hard to argue gravity with someone who doesn't even know what the the you know the main argument about gravity is and the, the main experiment that we used to prove it. Um, so I was disappointed that he hadn't even done that research because I couldn't argue about the validity of the experiment. I'm looking forward to him coming back. Oh, uh, sorry about are. that, buddy. My bad. Um, in, instead of dragging and dropping, once you're presenting the screen, just just click it and it will it will show everyone again. All right. So, okay. Right. So so just go through that again and yeah. just uh, yeah, yeah just present screen. I'm sorry yeah. about that. Um, it tech That's problems, okay. you know. <laughs> it's okay. Thanks for sending me the other link. No worries. Okay. So I'll go to entire screen again. Yeah. Okay. There we go. And then just move your browser out of the way and uh just yeah. okay you know, just show what just use your computer like normal and it okay. will we'll see what's there okay no problem right let me just go into this this was as i was saying before this is a sts mission 34 1989 and this shows clearly that there's a strange shape to the off okay i'm going to drag and drop it just no 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 don't, don't. I just told him not to do you that. You fucked up again. We just told you not to fucking... Oh, my God. Okay, I'm getting some alcohol. I'll be right back. Hey, uh, yeah. You there? Yeah, it's yeah. just caught me off every yeah, time. Yeah. So yeah. don't 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 drag and drop it. Literally, just, just display it on your screen, and, and we'll see it. All right? Um, oh, okay. Right. Okay. Let me just close that down then. Let me get you back on there. Presenting. Right. There we okay. go. Right. There we go. Yeah. Right. So once you've moved your browser out of the way, just use your computer like normal. Okay. Okay. Fantastic. Right. This is, as I said, STS Mission 34, 1989. Okay. We have a, a shape. You, of the you need to present the screen again. Oh, again. Right. Okay. Yeah. Let's do that. Technology. Eh? Yeah. Uh, entire screen again? Yeah, entire screen, yeah. Okay, there we go. Share. There we go. And now okay. just just open your files like normal. Don't drag and drop them or anything. Can everyone see that? Yeah, I can, so everyone else should be able to. Okay. Yeah. 
So what we've got here is we've got uh, the STS shuttle or whatever it was, the craft that were they were on at the time. They're moving along. Uh, just hide that there. And this is pictures here. Now you can clearly see the shape of the earth is not a ball. That that is in no way a ball. Uh, bear with me. I'm just looking up the specifics of this mission. You would actually have to go into the mission, uh, the video, and get this image. This is a, a still shot. Oh, no, I'm just looking up the, the actual specifics of the mission itself. Um, yeah. Bear with me. Okay. Uh, what did you do? What was actually happening, believe it or not, I'll give you a little description of what happened in that mission. If anyone wants to go on and grab the old footage, uh, or I can put a link for it on my site or in a description for anyone. When you actually watch this, they're looking out the window, and obviously they're filming. And uh, I think it's this one where NASA gives like a little call sign as if to say, remove the camera from where they're looking. Okay, so what it, what it says is as if as they're being told, you know, you you're coming over a certain place, and uh, we don't want people to see that, you know, we would like you to conceal that, you know, whether it was like a little thing that they use in a message or something like that, but that's that's what's said. Okay, so all of a sudden the camera moves, and that's all you can get of the shape of the earth. All the NASA images that I have looked at, they are nothing short of CGI and they're using, without a question of a doubt, a green screen technology. I mean, anyone looking on these videos of the Earth on the ISS's live feed, they're becoming absolutely ridiculous with this sort of technology. <clears throat> right, okay. And I've, I've also put up on, just to finish off, thanks. Yeah. I've also put up on my, my site also a video of the technology that they use between a set of four cameras that I came across on a German website, whether I was meant to be able to find it or not, I did. And it seems to be that what they start off with is the black screen at the, the very first uh, load up. Then they put an image, they take a still shot image. What they do is, for example, the ISS will go over a certain area or a satellite will go over a certain area. It will take hundreds if not thousands of still shots in a line then it will take still shots and it will pass them through four different cameras and then the last the very last process is is to put a curve on it okay that is how nasa does it with the iss that is what i believe that i found that is what i've put in a video uh, you know so when you understand the sort of sort of trickery that Na nasa is using it sort of makes you wonder, well, why? But I'm more concerned nowadays. I, as far as I'm concerned, I've got all the proof I need that we have been told are complete and utter lies to shape our earth and the size of it. All I need to know now is motive, okay? And I need proof, conclusive proof, that these agencies are to show people, to publish, to let others know that the things that they are causing you to believe are not true, okay? Okay, right. Um, first of all, this image here, um, you can clearly you can clearly see at the edges of the image where it's going up. All right, yeah, it's a that's, that's where I was shown. Yeah, yeah. Th well, this is obviously a distorted image. So, I mean, using that to kind of determine the shape of the Earth isn't a good thing to do anyway. Um, looking at the specifics of the mission, they actually had three different cameras on board. Um, uh, including um, a, a more modern Hasselblad camera. Um, do you have any of the other images or is it just from this one? This was just what I was looking for was abnormalities in the shape of the earth. And obviously right. that was and you, can, you can obviously see there that that's not, you know, that that's a, you know, I wouldn't say a doctor's image, but you can obviously see that that's not representative, right? Because of the way it's curving at the edges. But that's the point I would like to make. The shape that they have presented to us 
of course that looks different, but why is it we should trust that shape when we see other images that do not represent that shape? And we know fine well, most people know Be nowadays. Because we know that cameras can distort images, but when you actually get like full images, um, yeah. you know, it, it comports to reality. Yeah. Um, well, it's very hard to like, um, I think you were talking about composites and stuff, right? You know, putting it together, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. well, you know, that that's when stuff is closer to the ground, they, they have to, to make composites. But when you get stuff that's far enough away that you're not going to get the distortions at the edge like that with an image just in the middle where fisheye doesn't really affect it and stuff, then you, you always get what comports with reality, which is okay. that we live on a globe. Um, and this is this is just like I said, one of the cameras that they had on that mission. They actually had another two, so okay. to get um, you know an actual honest opinion of the images, I would have to see all of them from that mission. Okay. But, um, you... Again, that 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 image itself was yep. clearly not um, okay. a representative image due to the curving at the edges. So I, we couldn't use it to say flat or round. Okay. Can I bring up another image or is yeah. there something you? Yeah. Okay. This, this image oh, here is Apollo 11. They've already landed on the moon. They're now back on this little spacecraft that is here. Uh, can you see my mouse pointer as well? Yeah. Yeah, okay. They're now on this little craft. They're meant to be orbiting the Earth uh, or coming out of the, sorry, the moon's orbit and heading back towards the Earth. Mm -hmm. Obviously, this is a famous picture. Now, what, what do you think as regards the size of this Earth? and this picture do you believe that this is a genuine picture that, that yes I, um, absolutely um, i understand how scale works uh, so you know that that completely comports with what you would expect based on where that picture was taken okay right well let me show you the next one then so hang on before you do before you yeah. show the uh the next image i just want to say jpeg compression go ahead JPEG, what do you mean, sorry? You're actually going to demonstrate my point when you show your next picture. I already know what it is. Go ahead. Okay. So that off there, okay, that obviously hasn't got the moon in it. So we'll just jump to, hold on two seconds. Let me just show you the one that was most recent, this one here. So if you imagine that the little lander is here, coming back to the earth we, we everyone should know this one this was taken in 2018 this is basically a time lapse from a, mm -hmm. from a telescope that was about a million miles away now absolutely under no circumstances is that the same earth that was showed in the first photo and it, yeah, it, it is impossible no right absolutely impossible <laughs> okay right imagine going outside Okay, and you've got a bus at the end of your street, and then halfway between you and the bus, you put on the top of a pole an apple, all right? Now, from where you are, say the bus is 100 meters away, the apple is 50 meters away, all right? You zoom in on that apple with the bus behind it, and the bus is gonna look massive with the, the apple not looking very big, all right? But now, if you move up to that apple, okay, and you take a picture from literally at the apple, looking at the bus, the apple will appear way bigger than the bus. It's it's just simple, pers actual perspective. Okay, and what about that one? Do you believe that to be a real image? Um, don't know if I've seen that image before. I'd have to research that's it. Not, but there's not, there's a way of finding not, out with images are real or not. You can run them through the... Um, that's, uh, that's from NASA's own site. Yeah. Um, what's, is it an image of, from the lunar, lunar lander or something? Um, uh, I don't have a clue. That's one that NASA has on its very own site. And let me just point out, if you zoom into that, there's a horizon here that's almost completely flat. That's like, you know, if you've ever been down the front of the cinema and you put your feet up on the on the side thing, that's like what them will see at the back there, you know? Yeah. It's Hang like, on, fight, fight the flat Earth. Yep. Uh, just so, just so you know, that is a real image from the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter. All right, okay, so it is um, fourteen, sorry, uh, forty-six miles above the moon, right? 
if I remember right, there was a little... uh, around sixty miles. Around okay, yeah. So yeah, of course, the horizon is going to look flat. Yeah, at, at forty six, and you and you think that this surface is forty six miles above. Sorry, it's, uh, sixty miles. Uh, Red, correct me there. It's about sixty miles uh, above. Yes. Yeah. Okay. To uh, to to make sure that we understand, this image was com was composed from a series of images taken on October twelfth from the from the lunar reconnaissance orbiter that was about eighty three miles or one hundred thirty four kilometers above the moon's far far side crater, uh, Compton. C O M P T O N. Right. Okay. Cool. Thank you for that red rhetoric uh, for the confirmation of that, which makes it to me even more ridiculous. This is another image. That's a real one too from NASA again. And you can clearly see that that is taken from much further above the moon and probably zoomed out more. Okay. Now, what, what, what you're doing here is you are literally just displaying that you don't understand how photographs work and how perspective works <laughs> without trying to be nasty or mean here. But this is stuff that has been come and gone within the flat of argument since I've been it for, in it for the past few months, everyone knows that this is just an argument of incredulity because it's just perspective and height and cameras being at different zoom levels and stuff. So absolutely 100%, every yeah. one of those images you've shown can be you know, real images, be it they composites or full images, they are still accurate representations of what you would see based on their positions. Okay, so let me show you one from the STS-61 mission. Mm -hmm. What is that then? That looks like the Arabian Peninsula. Okay, so would you say that's been photoshopped? Um, well, just by looking at it with my eyes, I wouldn't know. I don't... Uh, I can't really see any specific irregularities. I would have to run it through an analyzer myself to check. What are you showing us here? Yeah, well, I'm just, no, I was looking myself there just to see uh, if there's any irregularity there, but it's uh, obviously a very close up show yeah. of the earth. I mean, point the curve point. doesn't, I mean, it, it does, I don't think it follows a complete curve at the top and the bottom. There may be you know it's slight well, leveling I, out again but you I know would, i would tend to believe that image there over any of the modern day images but the point i want to make out is what why the the bright blue a uh, beautiful color and then you have images that are all washed out from nasa like this image here so where's the beautiful blue image that was a way back and and remember i don't know if if any of the guys out there watching had uh, seen a strange thing happened on the way to the moon. <laughs> yeah, great comedy. Um, yeah. The only thing I wanted to add to that is, is you know, I have two eyeballs, and if I open and close them rapidly, both those eyeballs don't even see the same shades of green. So, um, I mean, different cameras. I mean, well, but well, with, with, sorry, if possible. I can just respond, with, with, with that, um, it's a lot further out. There's a lot of clouds. Um, it could be a different imaging systems. I'm pretty sure that's from the Discover satellite, if I'm not mistaken, right. which, which has on board not only a visual imaging system, but also infrared and ultraviolet imaging systems. So you will see colors in the picture that you wouldn't see if you're actually looking at it with your real eyes. Okay, so can I ask a question? Why is it that NASA continually wants to cover the Earth and never show original, just just simple photos? We can go out they, they do. I, I don't understand your yeah. question. They do all the time. Yeah. Where? Can you the, show me some? Yes. You're they, looking at one right now. That is a full that's, image. That's an, that's an original, genuine, undoctored... Uh, yes, not, that, that's from the Discover satellite, which is um, right. 200... No, sorry, 180,000 miles in geosynchronous orbit. No, oh. it's uh, it's at the Lagrangian one point. Okay. All right, okay. how far is that? So, so one million. One so, mil all right, okay. Well, okay. okay, so yeah, that's, so this is one million miles away, so of course, yeah. So, you, so you're telling me they haven't put any color filters through that? No, again, the, the the imaging systems on board the Discover satellite are more than your eyes. They also image infrared and ultraviolet and microwave, actually. 
Let me uh, let me let me make sure that everyone knows because Epic is kind of my baby when it comes to this because it was launched on a SpaceX rocket. Yeah. I, I I viewed it from 155 miles away. Let me just take this. That image is taken using three images. You're actually seeing a composite of three image because the the Epic camera does not take a full image. It takes a red channel, a green channel, and then a blue channel. And what they do is that they stack all three of those channels together to give you the color image that you are now looking at. Thank you, Red. So would, would an answer to the question, is that a doctored picture? No, it's not. It's three channels stacked on top of each other. Okay, so if I took my camera onto the, that mission that they were on or somewhere the distance or something, let's say it's got a lens that can see the Earth, and I don't do a single thing to my camera, would I get the exact same view as that? If you had you, three cameras. If, if you if you had the same exact camera at the same exact specifications that took a red channel, a green channel, a blue channel, and you were at the Lagrangian one point with the same amount of zoom, absolutely. But yeah. different cameras are going to show different things. Like, for example, I can take a picture of the exact same object in my room, and all I have to do is switch it from Intelligent Auto to raw and i will get two different images even though my camera did not move yeah my, um, I, my i bought my wife a dress last week and it, it's a gorgeous green dress right but when you take a photo of it with my smartphone it looks almost orange but when you take a photo of it with my um my, my canon tx80 it, it, it looks green like it should different cameras see things well, in different ways and well, can I, present the images monitors, in different ways. Colors are kind of adjustable like that. I got two monitors and each one has a different shade of blue on it. Like, yeah. you know, you just, you can tell, I mean, that's the same as cameras, whether you're projecting an image or taking an image, it's gonna, it's like, you don't see the same shade of green that I see. You no. think you do because you're taught that's green and that's fair. But if yeah. you and I were able to see what we're each seeing, we're not seeing the same shade of green. No, absolutely. Okay, so getting back to the this image here that I've zoomed in on, uh, and the reason I've zoomed in on that, so uh, a, a funny thing happened or a strange thing happened on the way to the moon. Uh, for those of the viewers that have not seen that, that was when Apollo 11 was meant to be two days into its mission heading towards the moon, and they covered all the windows in the shuttle or the spacecraft, uh, the, the lander, whatever you want to call it, and they made... A gap in the window that was the shape of a circle, a small circle. They pulled the camera way back into the, the shuttle or the craft. They uh, filmed uh, through that window. But on the original footage that someone got their hands on, when they peeled off all the stuff on the windows, it was given the illusion of being two days away from the Earth and heading towards the moon where they should have been. Uh, the, a picture of the Earth was seen behind. And the picture of the Earth that was seen uh, through the window was exactly this colour, not this washed out nonsense that we're seeing here. Thanks for explaining red rhetoric, uh, all the things about green, red and blue. But at the end of the day, if that's the colour of the Earth, that certainly is not. OK, and I'm sick and tired of continually NASA playing with the images, doctoring them. Photoshopping them, even the guy that has done and created for NASA, who has shown the images uh, of the ball off and who created them, he said uh, himself. Yeah, all right, all right. Let, I know exactly what you're going to say about the guy who says it's Photoshop because it has to be, yeah? Yep. Right, he's talking about one particular image, and that is the 2012 blue marble. That was taken, well, I say taken, that was made from 15,000 images taken from a satellite or orbiting over an eight hour period. Um, I think it did 120 passes. So yes, that image had to be photoshopped because it had to be put together to you know show you what it was. And at no point in time did NASA ever try and say it was a real image. What it is, is a composite of real images. And he had to add clouds and stuff to, to make it look like it did. but. But that was because they never intended it to be, you know, a real photograph. It was extremely high resolution images put together to get the kind of the best picture of the earth that, that we could get. They never tried to fool anyone. They never tried to pull the wool over anyone's eyes and say this was taken with just one camera. Everybody knew exactly what that what that was. And when he says it, it's Photoshop because it has to be, he's not lying for us to be able to view what that satellite was was putting out 
he had to put those images together. And I think it took him over like three weeks or something to actually put all that together, all the, Im the data that it got from the satellite for us to be able to see what it actually saw. So that really doesn't prove anything because NASA yeah. do composites. Okay, so this image that I've got up on the screen, is this a composite image? No, um, no, that's Discover Satellite. Correct. So this was taken at a million miles away. So why is it that NASA's Hubble telescope, am I right in saying that Hubble's still in orbit of the Earth? Yeah. Uh, it's not functioning uh, anymore, but... Uh, fight, let me take this one. I yeah, hate to step ahead. on your toes. I promised myself I wouldn't do it, but I, I, I've kind of hit my wit's end. All right, what about Hubble? Uh, I asked a simple question. Is Hubble still in the Earth's orbit? Yes, it is. Okay, is it still working? Yes, it is. Okay. Well, wait, wait, didn't it die oh. last week? No, that was the Kepler. Oh, okay. So oh, uh, Kepler died. Yeah. Okay. My question is, if this is a telescope that is, or a probe with a telescope on it that is a million miles away and it took a time lapse over 24 hours, and if anyone's seen the time lapse, I, I would strongly recommend, uh, if you haven't seen it, go and watch it. It's the moon flies by the Earth in a straight line it doesn't even it's not even as if it's on an orbit it's just so ridiculous it's oh my god I, I uh just just so that we're clear i don't yeah, want to hear how ridiculous it is to you i just want you to get to the point yeah red can i can i just say something you've come in several times on behalf of craig from fight the flat earth okay if you want to do a one-on-one -on -one with me i'm more than happy to do it. let me just finish please yeah no 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 sorry um it's you know, red, red, Red's thing is rockets. It's, it's understandable. Yeah, you that's, want that's, kind of that's okay. Anytime Red wants to debate me, he can debate me anytime and we'll talk fact and we'll not talk fiction. I'm at, but, and I'm thankful for Red coming in because obviously, Craig, you're not up to date on some of your stuff. You well, know, yeah, I, uh, break, yeah, uh, I would... hang on, hang on, break. And in, in, all, in all fairness, you're not very up to date on this either. So okay? what, have got, what have I got wrong so far? Pretty much everything. everything. Let, let, we all have specialties. Right? Let me uh, let me let me ask you a, uh, something. Break. Uh, would you agree with me that Pixar is one of the leaders in their industry when it comes to CGIing stuff? You know, for example, The Incredibles, Toy Story, that kind of thing. I cried at uh, Toy Story three. Can Can I ask a simple question? No, no, no. I want you to answer my question. Okay. Would Can we agree that Pixar is literally the leaders in their industry? When it comes to CGI and stuff, like, for example, The Incredibles, uh, Toy answer, Story. I will answer that question if you answer this first. Can we agree that Pixar is the leader in their industry when it comes to CGI and stuff? I could not tell you that. I haven't got the information. Okay. Can we agree that they're just very good and they're pretty well known, as in worldwide? Yes. They all know Pixar is. They're absolutely well known, yeah. All right. Perfect. They have towers of render farms, and that is the only way they get their, their images done. Toy Story took over 200 human years to make. The Incredibles took a lot longer than that and required a metric fuck ton of processing power. It takes them 30 minutes to render one frame of 4K resolution. 30 minutes per one frame. The Himawari satellite takes an image every 10 minutes so basically take the normal render time divided by three take the current quality times it by oh i don't know five and yet they're able to not only make that image and uh make it predictable to everyone it's actually able to use to make actual predictions with in terms of weather and even discovering forest fires how is it that pixar has such a bottleneck even though they literally have towers full of render farms or or something like that how is it that they have this bottleneck but nasa or in this case jaxa doesn't as i say i don't have the details on pixar i would agree with you 100 percent that pixar is one of the best at what it does as you can see from the toy stories uh, Good movies, but that's as far as my uh, intelligence base goes is on Pixar and the shape of the earth. I don't know the exact... His, his point was that um, if Pixar have to take so long to make just one, like, th you know, three-minute scene in 4K, how is it that JAXA are able to produce images of even better quality every 10 minutes? 
Are you talking about JAXA from NASA? No, JAXA, the Japanese space agency. Okay. Japanese, uh, Japanese space agency from the Himawari satellite. Okay. Yeah. Well, I know nothing about the Himawari satellite. I've not uh, looked into that. I, <clears> again, I this is one of the that. major things within the flat Earth kind of argument. And I'm really surprised that you don't know what the Cavendish is okay. or the Himawari 8. They're two okay. of my top proofs for the shape of the Earth. Okay. But what I'd like to say is uh, I think the conversation is becoming a little biased in the sense of that Red's actually having to get involved to answer some of the things for you, Craig, and he's actually more more knowledgeable in a lot of stuff than you. I mean, he's more knowledgeable on rockets. Everybody has specialties. Okay. Well, I mean, I, I, I know I, of the, the images, well, and you know, the, the fact yeah. is everything that you present, you know, all the pictures you presented me with, I've been like, I, I know what satellite that's from. I might have got the exact specifications of the satellites wrong, but, um, you know, Red's deal is rockets. If you wanted to show me a bunch of pictures of nuclear reactors, I'm pretty sure I could identify them way better than Red's could. Okay, and I couldn't sure. at all. Okay, so the point I'm making here is, uh, if Red wants to start answering for you, that's fine. We'll need to change the thing from Craig fight flat off to Red rhetoric versus me. You know, that's the sort of way this is going because at the end of the day, this is meant to be between me and you, not between me, you, Okay, Red. That, that's cool. Let's just carry on me and I, you. I, I would actually agree with that criticism. And believe me, I've been biting my tongue to the point where it's actually severed. <laughs> um, uh, break, yes, you are absolutely right. I should have never stepped in. I will try my best to step back while consuming a metric fuck ton of alcohol. But <laughs> just, just know that you have been pretty much 100% wrong on every assertion that you have made and I can demonstrate it. So oh, okay. if you feel if you feel as though you you can back up your stuff against someone who is by your words as knowledgeable as I am, That's I would right. love to talk to you after you're done with fight the flat earth. Absolutely. Uh, what I would say, Red, is, listen, I'm thankful for you coming in on Craig's behalf on some of the things, but as as I've pointed out there, if this was going to be between me and you, I'd have done a hell of a lot more research than's required to deal with Craig. Uh, no, no disrespect to you, Craig, but I've listened to Red Rhetoric. He's not in your league, okay? I heard him against Jaron, and uh, he put forward a very good argument that almost made me have to rethink the things that I know, okay? So that's the league he's in. You don't make me rethink anything. You just make me understand that people that follow you are of a low intellect as far as I'm hey, concerned. Hey, listen, Craig hasn't been criticizing you for the most part, but you're starting to just kind of get insulting here. Well, um, well, well, I the, have the, to... The thing is, I, um, I, I know a lot of things yeah. that Red's rhetoric doesn't. You know, okay. I, 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 know I, gu I guarantee that, that I have a better knowledge of physics and nuclear engineering than Red's rhetoric does. Okay, hang on. So, All right, I'm and now. What what Red's rhetoric is going to do um, is going to start being a moderator now. So this isn't a dick measuring contest on who can make you think better, or whatever or stuff like that. So break. I'm going to give you the floor. Please get to the point that you're going to try to make, and then fight. Continue on from there. Go. Okay. Thank you. Okay. The point I'm making is I'll take this image off. Uh, let's have a look here. We have images like, uh, all I'm saying is that NASA is continually providing images that are fake, are false, are doctored, are CGI, non-stop, okay? Then we have other images to confuse people. The Earth looks like that, okay? An oblate spheroid. Now, if you go on to look oh, at... Okay, sorry, sorry. I've got to stop you there because that is, like, an exaggeration. <laughs> Like that, that's like a massive exaggeration of what it actually looks like. That's not a real image. In fact, I'm pretty sure that's what they call a gravity map, but um, that that is not an actual representation of what the earth would look like without the oceans. It's massively exaggerated. Okay, so could we say it's closer to a pear shape like Neil deGrasse Tyson said? Well, no, he didn't say it's closer to a pear shape. He tried to explain that it's slightly oblate with, um, and slightly you know, bulkier at the bottom, but the difference is so minute that it really doesn't make any difference to the circumference of the Earth. The the, the mean radius stays the same all the way round. Um, what, you know, it's a complete misquote and misrepresentation of what Neil deGrasse Tyson said. He was literally just trying to explain that, no, it isn't 100% a perfect sphere. It is technically an oblate spheroid that is slightly bulkier at the bottom, but 
if you took a circle of the earth and put it next to a perfect circle, you would barely be able to tell the difference. Okay, so to finish off about the images that NASA's using, okay, anyone can go and try and uh, see for themselves the absolute nonsense that is throughout NASA's site. We have CGI satellites flying by planets. We have, uh, let me just put this one up as well. This is the Earth according to NASA. Okay, just another <clears throat> colorful picture. We no detail, no high definition, no nothing. NASA loves to provide, and, and this is on NASA's site. It's not even up to date. It's December the 2nd, 2002, but this is what they've got under the information in the earth, which is ridiculous. Uh, so, you, right, so you keep just going, it's ridiculous, it's ridiculous, but you're not giving me any reason why. Everything that you have shown me, I have told you why okay. it is not ridiculous okay every image that you've shown me every picture that yeah. you've shown me i've explained okay. to you why you are making an assumption that is wrong and i can okay. guarantee you right now that that's going to carry on okay so see this one here do you know the difference between cgi or an artist's impression this is the iss live uh of course i know the difference between cgi and artist impression please get to your so, point so let's, so let's see if if you do what is that are you telling me that's a real image did you say that's from the iss that's from the ISS. Well, then it's a real image. That's not a real image, okay? So you don't know the difference. Well, you've just told me it's from the ISS. It, that's where they claim it's from. Oh, hang right. On, hang oh, on, so hang so on, you hang are on, just claiming... Gavel, gavel, gavel. No more unsubstantiated claims. Break. Please demonstrate that it is CGI. Go. <laughs> demonstrate okay that that's a difficult one you know that's like asking me to prove what no one else has been no able. i'm asking you as a moderator to back up your own assertions the burden of proof rests with the person making the claim you okay. just made a claim now i demand that you back it up or retract it okay i'm saying that that's an artist's impression that that is a still shot that is used between four cameras and that curve there is used between four cameras to deceive uh, everyone into thinking that the authors are bold the the iss at the present time isn't even showing real footage it's a mix of cgi it's a little bit of real footage thrown in. It's an artist's impression. To I'm going to have to stop you there. We already know what the assertion is. We okay. know that you say it's CGI. We know that you say it's fake. We know that you say you don't believe it. Now the now it's up to you to demonstrate that it's actually the case, that it's CGI, not real, and an artist did it. <clears throat> Go. Right. There, there's a software online oh, okay. um, that you can run okay. pictures through yourself to see if there's any irregularities in if you okay. do your research, which I'm sorry, but you haven't done your research. If you do your research, you can find these things out for yourself. Yeah. I, I yes. Just, I just, I, hang, on, hang on, Craig. I'm need, I need you to sell down for a second. That is, that is your, your goal right here. So just, just point blank question. Yes or no. Can you demonstrate that the image you just asserted as CGI is actually CGI? I'm just going to try and show you. Yes. Okay. The image that you just showed us, that's the one I'm referring to. Yeah, I'm talking about all the images at NASA. No, just that one. Just yeah. that one that you showed. Can you demonstrate that that one image that you just showed us that you assert was from the ISS is, quote, CGI? Can you demonstrate that? I'm going to try right now. Because you told you told me, no, that's an artist's impression. And when you said that, okay. I thought, oh, right, he must have got the information saying it was an artist's impression. But, okay. but that was just a complete assumption on your part, wasn't it? But I'm sorry, I would not say that that's an assumption. I know the difference between an well, artist and clear, impression. Clearly, you, you know, if, you, if you can show me your qualifications to say that you are um, you know, qualified to determine the diversity of a picture, then I would love to uh, see those qualifications because I recently okay. watched a stream on the Non Sequitur show where they actually had a Hollywood CGI artist in yeah. and showing us exactly what CGI is and isn't. And okay. so... You know, it, okay. it is an assumption. You are making an assumption that that is okay. CGI. Okay. Um, so can can you demonstrate it? Yes or no? Just well, just think, yes or no. I, I think I've been asked that several times. The answer is yes. I've gave you that more than on one occasion. So if you give me a wee second, I'll show you. If Craig would like to take over, you and... you haven't actually given anything. You just gave the same assertion. That okay. image that you that we're we're not going to be doing I'm this thing anymore. Looking. I'm actually looking for another image to provide that evidence that you have asked for. 
You, and, and that's the thing that you're not understanding. I'm not asking for another image. I'm asking for you to demonstrate that that one particular image that you made the assertion on is actually CGI. Can you do that, yes or no? Yes. Then do it. That's what I'm trying to do. <clears throat> I wish I'd bought some more tequila. Yeah. Okay. Craig, you can go on with something else if you want just now. No, nope, just... no, nope. Craig, it's not going to go on. We're going to wait for you to demonstrate to back up your assertion. Okay. We will wait. Okay. You know, if it makes you feel better, the other lemon bird was actually. You cut that out there, Brainy. What was that? There we go. There we go. That's that. Okay. My assertion or, or my demonstration at NASA is nothing but a absolute CG. That's image. not that image. That's um, not that image. So I, I'm going I, to I'm go sorry, ahead. I, as your opponent, I am going to say this now. We're not moving on until you show me that that image that you showed me, that one particular image is CGI. Okay, now, I don't want to now, hear about your beliefs about NASA showing a bunch now, of stuff. That being, one now, particular image. Now, now you're being foolish, Craig. Okay? No, I'm not. Because I can prove to you S that a whole bunch of them are real. You're making an assumption, and I am asking you to back it up. Back up the assertion or retract it. Right. This, I'm not going to retract it. This well, then you lose. Sorry. Assumptions need to be backed up. This here is the system that is used on board the ISS that accounts for all the images, not just that one image, okay? It's an HDEV startup initialization that starts with a black screen. It transitions to a still shot. It transitions again after another camera system. It puts in a CGI a ISS on the screen. It goes back and it transitions again, and you end up with your curve. Okay. And I like how none of that is set is said yeah. on the documents. Yeah, so absolutely. Hang on, nothing as the, that you as just the said. moderator, hang on. As the moderator, I'm going to have to call, call it so. On that last image that we have asked you multiple times to demonstrate that CGI, you have not been able to do that. So I'm just going to advise that for the for future reference, please refrain from making assertions that you cannot back up. Otherwise, I will be so quick to call it out. And Craig, that goes for you too, jackass. Yes, sir. Okay, can I just say something very quickly? I'm going to stop with the images and let's get down to some other nitty gritty, Craig. Uh, what okay. I would ask you is, you said about me not being qualified, okay, to decide uh, what you're telling me is, uh, is that my own instincts, my own eyes, my own knowledge of camera systems, etc., 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 are nowhere near red rhetorics level on camera systems or otherwise, but you're telling me I'm not qualified to understand or decide or make assertions of whether an, an image is CGI. What you're asking me to do is the same as what you mentioned earlier on about the Hulk. Forget its hearing, forget its eyesight. Okay, I'm good at some things, and I know the difference between CGI. Can I prove it? This is my proof. As far as I'm concerned, that is proof enough that the ISS is absolute nonsense. CGI, garbage. Okay? But that doesn't prove it. You haven't proved anything. You keep saying this is my proof, but you haven't presented any proof. That's because it wouldn't matter if I put the proof right in front of your face, Craig. You it wouldn't matter if I strapped you to a Sawyer's rocket and sent you to the ISS yourself. You'd still say it was flat. Craig, I'm going to ask you a question. Where's Go ahead. Your, where's your proof that the Earth is flat? Where is your qualifications to talk on the size and shape of the Earth? Are you okay, easy, easy, Are you easy. 100% I can just provide you with that right now. I am an engineer. Oh. I have a degree in physics. I have travelled the world as part of the Royal Navy. I have seen the size and shape of the Earth. I have done the physics experiments to prove that gravity exists. I have calculated the distances around the world using the navigation systems on board not only submarines, but surface ships. I have calculated the, the, the size of the continents and uh, compared them to flight paths. I have um, looked, and, and looked at and analyzed images that show things being for, um, lower than they should be. Um, I have seen millions and millions and millions of images and pictures uh, and videos from space that prove everything about the shape of the Earth. Gravity. Okay. The only if, thing if, I was going to Wait, 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 I haven't finished. Gravity is a demonstrable fact. 
you can call it what you want, there is a downward accelerating force of 9.8 meters per second squared. And if that exists, the Earth cannot be flat. Right, you're shaking your head. So, like, let's talk about gravity. Why don't you think gravity is real? All I want to add, before we get going, all I want to say about this is that one thing that I always see as a trend, and, and everybody's guilty of it, but one thing I always see as a trend is that, you know, Break, you're asking for him to, to present proof that things are the size they are. But, I mean, really, I mean, a lot of times you're guilty of the same thing. You bring up images from websites that are, you know, really don't have the information to make the claims you're claiming, and then you try to say that that's some sort of evidence. And and really, we could turn around and say the same thing back. Right, of like, you know, I, I can then that provide you've seen the, your own eyes. I can then provide the maths and the physics to back it up. And I'm not trying to gang up here. I'm going to let Fight do his thing, but I just wanted okay. to throw that in because okay. I see it from the sidelines. Okay, here. before we jump on to something completely different, there, uh, Craig, uh, you said you had done this, done that. You, the list was so long. And it was so fast that I couldn't really write anything down to to individually ask you on. Now, now as I was asked as regards my very one image that I showed there to prove to substantiate the claim that that was a, a fake image, can you now show me your proof that I should believe any single one of those last statements that you made? As regards, you have substantiated the size of the earth. You have done this. You have done that. You have. By the sounds of it, Craig, how long were you in the military, if you don't mind me asking? Because nearly a decade. Like... For nearly a decade. Okay. So, and what was your job again, if you don't mind me asking? I was a nuclear, electrical, and mechanical engineer. A nuclear, electrical, mechanical engineer? Yes. Okay, so so what is your actually, so at the end of that, for people out there who are not as bright as you, uh, what, what is the, the end of that? What, what would your job be to do in the Navy? Well, my specific jobs was to maintain and monitor systems to keep them active as much as they could be, specializing okay. in the energy generation systems. Okay, so what the hell is that to do with the shape of the Earth? Well, using naval systems... Um, well, my, obviously my speciality is uh, around energy systems, okay? But as a submariner, you don't just learn your specialization. <laughs> you learn everything on board okay. that sub, right? And one of the okay. things on board the sub is the navigation systems. Okay? So okay. I, I, I navigate, use in the navigation... Does that, navigate, does that mean to navigate the seas? Yes. Okay, so... So, so, in, okay. so let, let me get to my point, all right? All right. The way that I can confirm that the Earth is the size that it is, is because I would have to at points calculate the amount of fuel needed to go certain distances, right? <laughs> and when I can confirm the distances, that oh, the okay. amount of fuel that we have is making yeah. us go, and I can show you the maths and everything to show you how much fuel is needed to, to get a ship or a submarine a certain amount of distance, that, that, you know, I can show you all that maths if you want. But when no, you can thanks. clarify the, the, the when you can clarify that these things comport to the reality of of what you're given, you know you're given a map that says that this is the distance, and then you can calculate the fuel and energy requirements needed, and it matches okay. up. That to me is yeah. confirmation of the size okay. of the Earth. Okay, that is complete and utter the biggest load of rubbish I've ever heard. No disrespect to you. I admire the very fact that you were in the army or the navy. Uh, I've okay, what, why respect. why is it rubbish? Why is calculating well, the actual you distances me, you, let, you have to travel? You let, you let me finish because you said that you can. You weren't even a specialist in any field. No, whatsoever. I didn't. I didn't say that. I I I'm, I was energy generation specialist. I was a yeah, nuclear engineer. Okay. Okay, and so as many people, energy specialists, that does not qualify you to be telling me that you know and everyone else out there falsifying the the things that you're saying, that you're claiming, uh, you are not acclaimed to be telling anyone the shape of the earth or the size of the earth Are based on how much fuel you used in certain jumps. Isn't this the pot calling the kettle black right now? I, I can no, absolutely no, no, use no. that to, to 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 prove that things are as they say. Not no, not, not not only that, so, but so, when so uh, wait, so wait, wait, wait. Time, it's not only that, it's distances across gavel, the land that gavel, comport. gavel, Sorry. gavel, gavel, gavel. All right, let me let me go ahead and just stop this because right now we're back to having a dick measuring contest. All right, break and and flat. Listen, I am a fucking plumber. 
and I can debunk every single flat earther out there, even those that have claimed to have PhDs and been weather people and everything like that. Your qualifications doesn't matter. Why? Because your evidence has its own merits that it can stand on. So let's stick with the evidence and see where that takes us. Go. Okay, let me just point out this before we go any further. Uh, the reason I mentioned about qualifications is because that's what I was been accused of, that I'm not qualified to speak on whether a, whether an image is CGI or otherwise. Okay, so I think you just pointed out there that qualifications don't really matter and this ain't a deck measuring contest. So, okay, so don't say to me about my qualifications to measure something are less than yours okay let's just get well, on with the facts so if you craig if you okay. want to present me with some facts that you've given me nothing or anyone I, else in the show for that matter i just said that i would give you facts. facts i just said that i would show you the maths and the calculations to prove the amount of fuel needed to travel certain distances well and break i wasn't trying to like point out or criticize what i was trying to point out is that you were doing that exact same thing you were criticizing his credentials and then what his knowledge level is and i don't think that you have the credentials to to do the same thing so you're both you're both in the same boat so i don't think you criticizing his credentials is that fair especially when his credentials actually take a lot of fucking school yeah okay so so we shouldn't question anything just because somebody's got a phd above the name in the town of pack of lies well, oh sorry. no absolutely not right yeah. let, let's let's break down what kind of person i am right yes i trust what the scientific consensus says but that doesn't mean oh, that i will not try and find out the, the you know back up the things that i'm told myself i never okay. just accept what i'm told you know, um, I, whenever I see something on the news, I never just accept it. I will go and look at it from multiple sources to try and find the actual truth. And again, going back to my degree in physics, my first one, doing that degree, you have to do experiments to prove that the physics of the universe work, that there is a downward accelerating force of 9.8 meters per second squared, that springs and tension rods have certain torques that they break at. And uh, you know, you have to actually demonstrate that the physical principles you are learning in theory are transferable to the real world. And when, yeah, and and when a massive amount of those things involve G as a calculation, that proves that gravity is a thing. You know, I want to get into just a basic thing here, right? You keep saying that gravity isn't a thing. So... You tell me now, why do things fall at 9.8 meters per second squared? Listen, forget the masks. All I need to do is... No, use no, I, I've asked you a question. I would like a direct answer, please. Yeah, I will try and answer you directly. Uh, I don't need to know the mathematical stupid equations of a theory that's never been proven, and I don't need to prove it to you because what you're asking is for me to prove, uh, along with all the other people that believe that the shape of the earth is not what NASA is saying it is. Not That's what not what I'm asking is. here. Break, I'm sorry, but I'm going to ask the question again. Simple question. Please give me a direct answer. Why do things fall down at a constant acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared? I'm not asking for any okay. mathematical formulas. Okay. I just want okay. your reason for okay. why things okay. fall. Okay. So, so on the top of Mount Everest, if it was a straight cliff drop and I dropped two things at the exact same time, uh, one being heavier, let's say two cannonballs, a small cannonball, you know, that wouldn't be affected by uh, air fluctuation or the winds or anything like that, that would go straight down. Mm -hmm. You want to tell me, you want to tell me that they drop exact same time? Um, if they're well, ignoring any air resistance and everything, because obviously, yeah. um, to reach terminal velocity, you have to take into account the drag on on thing that's falling. But if you had two objects with, yeah. you know, sufficiently low drag, no matter how Cannon big they are, they will yeah. hit the ground at the same time. You, you're telling me that from the top. Of, listen, I know for a fact that your experiments you see that you're actually talking about are only done from certain heights, okay? And I've seen the ones that are done from a very low height. So it's practically impossible that when you drop two items next to each other at a very low height that they're ever going to reach maximum velocity or they're ever going to reach a speed that one will overtake the other. That's how you cleverly deceive no. people. No, no. You still so, haven't, I, I'm sorry, break. I'm going to ask the question again because you're not answering me. Why do things fall? 
with a constant acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared. Go. Whose theory is that? That's not a theory. That's a fact. Things uh, fall with a constant sure acceleration of 9.8 okay, meters per enough, second squared. Okay, enough, 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 enough. Gavel, gavel. Break. Why do things fall? Why do they accelerate? But things things fall because when there's nothing to support them, they just fall to the floor. There is no gravity pushing them down. I don't care what there isn't. I want to know what there is. What is why do okay. objects fall? And they accelerate. Yeah. Okay, because if they're not on a hard, uh, uh, well, I'll answer the one about falling first. As regards acceleration, there's no experiment that I have seen done from twenty thousand feet. Or why do objects fall? simply because there's nothing supporting them right okay so things fall just because right, just let, let, me, let me let me let me uh, get back nothing. to you right the, the same as the same as if someone chopped the legs off of me i would fall because there's nothing supporting why me. let me let, let, let me right, Reds, Reds, on, let, let on, it back to me please please I've, I've got this right okay you're saying things fall because yep. all right yeah all right uh -huh. just yep. because yeah that is not a reason all right and it doesn't just fall, it accelerates. I don't care if you agree with the exact figure, but things agree. accelerate when they fall. Yep. And that is a fact. And okay. a fact so... about acceleration is that acceleration requires a force. That is a demonstrable, not arguable fact. Acceleration requires a force. So things are accelerating when they fall. Please tell me why. Okay. So you're saying that things require force to... So if, you, if I take something up to the Empire State Building and drop that, it requires a force for it to fall, Craig? Yes. No, it doesn't. Yeah. Again, no, it doesn't. it's not... It, no, it, 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 it Break, it's not falling, it's accelerating. Uh, Acceleration requires a force. Who said? What do you mean, who says? It's a fact. Well, you, Things are accelerating at 9.8 metres per second fact, squared. A, a fact from who? A fact from everybody who knows that things fall at 9.8 <laughs> metres per second squared. When you jump oh, out of an aeroplane, you accelerate at 9.8 metres per second squared until you reach oh. terminal velocity. Okay, so you're telling me, listen, this is your own words, okay? This is showing how stupid what you're saying is. So you're telling me that every... Everything requires a force to fall. No, I am saying things require a force to accelerate. Oh, well, you're changing it now. You no, said no, I'm not. This is exactly what I've been saying, because things don't just fall break. Things accelerate. OK, so where's the excel? So you've seen all the examples of acceleration. Have you seen the examples of where they put a car up with something lighter and they hold it from a crane, they drop them both at the same time and they say that they hit the off the same time, yes? Yeah. Okay. So where's where's the acceleration? As it's leap Oh my god, what do you mean where's the acceleration? It has to accelerate to start moving. It was at zero miles an hour when you dropped yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, 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 the, the, break. I'll, I'll, I'll explain it like Brainy just said. Right? When it was with the crane, it was moving at zero miles an hour. When it left the crane, its speed started increasing until it hit the floor. That, my friend, is called acceleration. So what force was required? Something because you—that's what I'm asking long. you. This is what Absolutely I'm asking you. Nothing. Listen, you guys. Uh, seriously, let me let me just point out something. This is a mentality of people that believe we live on a ball. Sorry, they but break. You haven't answered my question. No, Why do things on, accelerate? I've answered it several times over. The, no, the you haven't, and I've just proven how stupid you are to everybody because you don't know that acceleration requires a force. No, listen, you said a thing that's dropped from the sky or any height accelerates, correct? Anything that is dropped accelerates. Anything. Yeah, yeah. So what force is required? That's what I'm asking you. I know the force. You don't know the force. It's no force required. You just drop oh something. Oh, my God. Uh, again. Okay. Right, break. All right. Let, let gavel, me just... gavel, 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 gavel. All right. Here's, here's, here's where we're at right now. We are at a point where um, I have ran out of alcohol. Uh, I'm going to read a super chat, if that's okay. Yep. Gregory, for $5, said the following. Name one credentialed scientist who disagrees with gravity, and where did he get his info from? I am an actual scientist, and gravity is real. Go ahead. 
Uh, it's time that you rethink your whole life, mate. That's what I would say. You know, pick a different job. If you ain't worked it out yourself by now, you know, don't rely on people like Einstein. It's theory after theory after theory. The Again, theory of that. scientific theory. So, so, so hang on, hang on, hang on. <clears throat> I don't. I don't think you you figured out the correct answer to this is one of two: either the name of the credentialed scientist or the admission of "I don't have a credentialed scientist." So let me ask you again: name one credentialed scientist who disagrees with gravity, and where did he get this info from? Can uh, you name a scientist? Yes or no? I would need to look that up, guys. Okay. So the answer, Gregory, for your five dollars super chat is he doesn't have a credentialed scientist. Okay. Okay. See, see how easy that was answering. <clears throat> right. I'll get. I'll get back to. I'm going to try and make this even simpler. <clears throat> All right. You can. Can you see my phone? Right. Your phone. Yeah. Can you see that on this on the on the YouTube? Just look. Look at the YouTube stream. Look at the YouTube stream. All right. Two. Two seconds. And there's a touch of a delay, remember, so you can have yeah. to give him a second to see your phone. Yeah, that's okay. Let me just uh, go on to it quickly, and I'll try and see. Right. Anyway, I'm, I'm holding my phone in the air, right? I'm on it, yeah. Okay, so yeah. if I want to move the phone up, yeah. does it require a force? Yes. Right? If I want to move the phone left or right, does it require a force? Absolutely. So why is there not a force required for it to go down like that? Why is that direction different to every other direction? Where does the vector come from? Craig, it's a, it's a simple thing, and that's probably why you don't understand anything about the science of how ridiculous it is to present that you live in a ball off okay drop you're something. you're evading the question yeah. just answer the question right and i'll ask you again something requires a force to move up to move left to move right why does it not require a force to go down where does the vector come from what do you mean where does the vector come from in the lanes? direction where does the direction come from why is it going down? There has to be I'm a gonna, reason why I, I, it is going down. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to man mansplain this. All right, hang on. I'm sorry. Break. Uh, I uh, just please answer this series of questions without hesitation. I'm actually begging you right now. Okay. Does that's, that phone? That's, that's, hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hey, hey. Does that phone have mass? Yes or no? Absolutely. Okay. When he was holding it, it was at zero miles an hour. And then when he let it go and when it hit the desk, it was traveling a certain amount of speed, right? Yep. That would be acceleration, right? If you want to say that it's acceleration, I'm sorry, you're wrong with that. If it starts at oh zero miles an hour, yep. if it starts at zero miles an hour yep. and it increases speed until it hits the table, which it did, is that not acceleration? Yeah, without force. Okay, so, okay, I, I didn't ask that part, but I'm glad that we have, we agree that's mass. We agree that's acceleration. Let's see if you know your science. Absolutely. What is mass times acceleration? Speed. What is mass uh, times I think, acceleration? I think we had someone in the background answer that there. Velocity. No, no. Okay. no. I don't think I'm right, actually. <laughs> Brainy, do me a favor. Shut the fuck up. What yeah. is, what is mass times acceleration you agree that there's mass you agree that there's set that there's acceleration what does that equal okay it's a long time for being at school mass times acceleration you want to just google it go, uh, go google it tell me what it tell, tell me what it says mass times acceleration It's got velocity here. Mass times acceleration. What does... Oh, 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 Jesus fucking Christ. Sorry, we're not all as clever as you. Uh, believe me, yeah. I figured that out a long time ago. Yeah, okay. Full of delusions. 
What is mass times acceleration? I'll give Come you on. a clue. It I begins it. with an Ma S. Mass times, mass times acceleration here is... It's not telling you at all. Starts with an F. Starts with an F. Begins with... Uh, ends with ORS. ORS. Force. Yeah, starts with F, ends yeah, in force. I get, I get what you're yeah. saying. All so I mass had, times acceleration had, is force. All so, I had was so okay, right. So, so the point is, mass times acceleration yeah, is force. Right. That's a lie. The phone. No, it, wait. It's not. It's not a lie. It's a dance rule fact. Mass times acceleration equals force. The phone has yeah. mass. It's accelerating. It requires okay. a force. Okay. So when something is sitting on it, let's let's put a, a thing on two wheels, okay? Or, or a car on four wheels, let's say, for example, or any object on four wheels. Does that move by itself? No. Oh, there's an interesting fact. It requires a, a force. force. Yes. Okay. Yeah, force. But that's our point. You're yeah, making my point for me. Require, it doesn't require any force when you drop something. That's your problem. You're, yeah, but right, in again, what magical world does something accelerate without a force? You said yeah. yourself, a car is sitting at zero. You need to apply a force to move in any direction, and somehow and something just does right, down. Okay, right, uh, like, Bray, can you... answer me this. Can you provide me another oh. circumstance where acceleration doesn't require a force? Just, Just provide me one other time. Yeah, when Apart you drop from falling, it doesn't require any force. It's Why? Why is the rules different for that to everything else? Where because that's, is because, the down coming from? I'm sorry, but you're, Craig, you don't understand the physics Craig, here. You cannot Craig, just it's a simple principle. If there's nothing supporting it, it, it of course it drops and it Why? works. Why? Why? There has to be a reason for the movement. Yeah, I'm under. Uh, listen, I understand what you're saying, but I'm sorry. I don't think you do, yeah, really. Of course, of course, I do. Well, then, then you understand that mass times acceleration is force. If something is accelerating, it requires a force. So, unless you can tell me why that part of physics disappears when things are moving down, then you're wrong. Okay. Okay. okay so, can you explain the northern lights? Yes. Okay. Uh, it's, it's um, it's be uh, solar no, it's um, be energy fun getting fun trapped fun. in Earth's magnetic field. Yeah. Okay. It's it's uh, so that's that's a phenomenon that has been one hundred percent acclaimed worldwide known. It's not an assumption. It's it's a fact. Yeah. Yeah. The same as the theory of relativity. Rel again, relativity isn't just a theory. There is the theory of relativity, which is the comporting body of evidence, but okay. relativity is a fact. Okay, so would you would you say that the, the moon, why the moon doesn't fall out the sky, what's the reason for that? We've covered that because of its velocity. Oh, it just goes so fast it doesn't fall out the sky? So called the that, conservation Craig. of momentum. We've Craig, covered this. Craig, Please don't Craig. go backwards. Um, so Craig, what, yeah. What yeah. You, no, break, break, break. You asked the question. Forgive me for getting involved again, but I'll go ahead and provide you the answer in a very simple way. Is that fair? No, that's not fair at all. I'm asking. Uh, then, then, then I'm going to be unfair for a second. If okay. you have a ball and you throw it sideways, it's going to curve and it's going to hit the ground. Correct? You take that same ball and you throw it sideways even harder. It's going to curve and hit the ground, but slightly further away. What if I was able to throw that ball so hard that the curve of its arc matched the curve of the Earth. The ball would always be falling towards Earth, but Earth would always be curving away from it just as fast. And if you are high enough where there is no atmosphere, i.e. no drag, it will continue to fall around the Earth forever. That's why the astronauts are floating in the International Space Station, because it's not that there's no gravity, they're simply free falling with everything else around it. The uh -huh. moon it has that same is in that same spot of equilibrium with speed and height uh, underneath the force of gravity. Okay, I know I know how they describe and explain that that they're going so fast, seventeen and a half thousand miles an hour, five miles a second. I know all the nonsense surrounding that. Okay, I, I know all of that, but it doesn't make it real. The same. No, as what makes it real is that I've actually measured the size shape and altitude of the international space station you've now you've now measured that 
Yeah, yes, Brett, Brett's I have. Did, Brett's yeah. did it along yes. with um, Astronomy Live. He actually measured the distance to the ISS. And BM Furball took a picture of the ISS with Brainy, a sun background. Brainy, Brainy, Brainy. Hang on. What, what was the question, Break? So how did you measure that? I did that using a lunar transit. Myself and Astronomy Live went to Venice, Florida, where the moon was going to transit the moon. Uh, Astronomy Live was at one location, and I was one kilometer away. When the ISS transited the moon, our different distances gave us a thing called parallax with the, with the moon or with the International Space Station in front of the moon. Via the use of trigonometry and with the parallax measurements that we were able to get because the moon has a known angular size, we were able to triangulate the height of the International Space Station. Okay. From there, we were also able to look at the angular size of the International Space Station compared to the angular size of the moon. With its distance now known, we can actually figure out the size of the International Space Station because of the actual law perspective, which is alpha equals 2 times the arctan of g over 2r, where alpha is the angular size of the object, g is the actual size of the object, and r is the distance to the object, and we were able to rearrange the equation to solve for g. With that, we were able to look at how many frames it actually took for the International Space Station to go from one side of the moon to the other side of the moon. And the value that we got was around eight kilometers per second. Okay. So that means that we were able to confirm its height, its speed, and its size. That's, that's very good. Now, uh, I think that's admirable that you're out there doing your own tests and stuff. I did hear you mention some of that when you were debating with uh, Jaren. So I know all about that, them calculations that was mentioned then, and I know that you love calculations and that. So have you ever tried to calculate the uh, crepuscular rays of the sun then? The, they're crepuscular, and uh, crepuscular. what do you mean, cal what do you mean uh, calculate? Have you calculated the distance of the sun? You said you'd, you calculated mm -hmm. the distance of the ISS being away from the Earth. You, don't, you can't calculate the distance of the sun using parallel rays. Why? Right. Here's because the thing about parallel. here's the thing about crepuscular no, rays. Not, okay. Uh, wait a minute. No, no, hang on. Wait a minute. See when they are tri triangulated. Why can't you calculate them? Uh, for the same exact reason, you can't triangulate train tracks, even though they appear to converge in the distance. Right. Um, break, That's how perspective I, I, works, my friend. I, I live okay. in. I live in. So, uh, I live in Fife for, uh, by the Firth of Forth. Right. I've got mountains on either side of me. Yeah, I know, we I know get we get the most spectacular talking. cloud breaks here. Right. So there is constantly times where I am driving past the crepuscular rays. And as I'm driving past them, they will go from spread out to straight down. As I drive away again, they go to spread out again. The crepuscular rays, the, 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 you know, the actual way it looks like they're spreading out changes based on where you are. Because the sun isn't small and local, those light rays are coming in exactly parallel so based on where you are, makes them look like that. If you were able to triangulate the distance to the sun using the crepuscular rays, then they would stay in the same orientation no matter where you were looking at them. They wouldn't okay. change the way they do. Okay, I totally 100% disagree with you on that. And I, I would say... Sorry, what do you disagree with? Every, every single image that comes even from the lying ISS imagery... The sun is not 93 million miles away. Anyone um, uh, in the right mind can see that. Break, I've calculated uh, we were... the distance to the sun using the same method that, that Reds did with parallax of Venus. Uh, I've actually calculated the distance to the sun myself. So, uh, you know, oh it God. is 93 million miles away. Yeah, what, what uh, and I take it the moon is 248,000 kilometers away as well. Yes. I, I was able to calculate that back in 2015 with a friend of mine by name of Jade West, who is sadly no longer with us. Yeah, and, and what apparatus was used for that? We were using a very rudimentary uh, protractor and a dial-in measure, uh, measure with a telescope. And for from me, two I... different locations, mine was in Tampa, Florida. The other one was in California, right by Lovers Point. Okay. Uh, what I would say is that, as again, I would say that's totally admirable that you guys are out there and doing some field tests yourself. You're not just relying on uh, other people say so. Of but course, that's, to... that's what I've tried to say about myself the whole time. Well, not so much you, Craig. I was talking about red rhetoric. Well, I, like I was saying, I've done the observations and calculations myself to, to figure out the distance to the sun. Um, thing is about me is I'm disabled and I, I can't really get out and about anymore. 
So okay. I have to rely on the observations of other people. It doesn't mean I'm not going to be doing any of myself. I'm trying to arrange a whole thing where a bunch of people can help me get up to Terrapin Law, the same place that Miles Davis did his observations. But it requires a lot more effort for me to go and do those observations myself. But I feel I owe it to my subs and the people that are following me to do them myself. So I am going to try and do observations, some that have been done before, just to try and back them up. But I also plan on doing a whole bunch of my own observations. And that's not the only things I'm doing myself. I'm currently in the process of um, arranging to build from scratch a mechanical gyroscope. I've got, um, <clears throat> I know the raw materials to order. I have a machine shop built. I have an aircraft hangar where they're going to let me not only build, but do the experiment to prove that the Earth's rotation's in. So I am out doing those things myself as well, but it's not quite as easy. So Red's been this in, in this a lot longer than me. He's had more chance to do these things. That, that's wonderful. But just because I haven't done the observations that Reds has done doesn't mean that I can't then use those observations as proof. Okay, if you want to take those as proof, that's fine. But I don't take proof unless it's verifiable. And I need to be able to verify that myself. Okay, do you know, I, of, I do you know of Miles Davis? Mate, I've heard the Miles Davis. Right, okay. Well, he's got observations on his channel um, yeah. of points in Scotland. Yeah, you know, um, you're obviously in Scotland, right? Yeah. Right. So go and do those observations yourself, and prove it to yourself. There, there's I... plenty. There's plenty of observations that you can go and do yourself to actually back up these things. Okay. Did I also what? hear that correctly? What? Sorry. Did I? Um, I might be uh, mischaracterizing you. So if so, I apologize. But I just want to make sure I hear this correct. Are you saying that you're not going to accept any observation we give you unless you do it yourself? Uh, I think it's came to the stages you cannot trust the people that are putting forward the observations. They have a, a very large bias. Okay. What do you, what do you think my, my bias is? Do you think my bias has contributed to the International Space Station going in front of the moon? No. Uh, and uh, As I said several times, I admire the fact that you're going out there and doing field tests yourself. I think that <clears> is what's required because yeah. what, what I picked up, just, just to point this out, I listened to the full discussion with you and Jaren, okay? And as I said, some of the stuff you said, I didn't quite understand everything because you're, you're very clever in, in your uh, certain subjects that you were talking about, okay? I'm clever with things, uh, with observing things. Okay, and knowing the difference between a truth and a lie, as far as I'm concerned, that's what I'm good at. I see, I pick up on detail. Okay, other people don't. They wouldn't notice the things I notice. The same as I probably couldn't do the stuff that you're specialised in. Uh, but the point I was thinking throughout that whole discussion is, isn't it funny for all of us? Okay, and this is collectively for those that believe what that the Earth is flat. For those that believe we live on a ball, there is no. 100% standard. There is no unequivocal truth that is out there that you can just go to that can end this argument. Yet NASA has the tools. They And I was thinking this when I was listening to you and Jaren. I was thinking all oh, this could be solved. All NASA need to do is turn the Hubble round or the James Webb when it's up there if they can send a thing a million miles away into the galaxy and take a, a 24 hour time lapse of the moon coming across its orbit or orbiting the, the earth all they need to do is turn that telescope around the james webb in live time let's see people upside down on the ball uh, okay I've got a... let me uh, let me let me make uh, that was to me that i understand that was to me uh, here's the thing. Well, can I, can I, I fully can I just say I haven't finished. If you just and I'll make it quick before okay. end. If you don't mind, thank you. All you need to do is turn that James Webb telescope round. Uh, forget about sending it off to distant planets. We're interested in the shape of the Earth and the size of the Earth, okay? And we're yet to get to the bottom of it. Turn the James Webb round when it gets up there, and let's see. Uh, not still images. Let's see a video recording. Uh, in live time for the whole of the planet that will end this silly discussion that should never need to take place because NASA has the capability of doing that. They won't do it because they do not want you or anyone else for that matter, whether it be me and my belief, whether it be you and your belief, whether it doesn't matter, they won't do it because there's something they wish 
to keep secret. And that has been like that for a long, long time. That's all I would say. Mike, then okay, can I, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me respond to that then, okay? Um, that, that, that is literally just baseless assumptions coming, coming from you there. Um, and here, here's the main thing, all right? Why the fuck do NASA want to do anything to prove anything? They don't care what because you think. No, wait, wait, let, let me respond. Let me respond. They, yeah. they don't care. They don't care what you think. They really have oh. no interest in proving okay. anything to you. What Fair they word. want to do is help advance humanity by okay. exploring space. Okay. So they've here's, got no here's... reason to prove anything to you because as far as they're concerned, it's already been proven. We've okay. been to the moon it's, it's, and we've seen so the shape me, of the earth. Let me, let me come back on that one. Unless Red Rhetoric would like to come in there and I, I would like to hear what he's got to say on that. Yeah, the, the fact is, is that even if they did everything that you wanted, I can pretty much guarantee my left nut and the right one as well that you will not believe them. Not only do we have an image of the Earth taken every 10 minutes, that is 11,000 by 11,000 resolution. Not only did DirecTV give you a 100% live broadcast of the Earth that lasted for months until the camera failed, not only do we have the Epic camera that's at the Lagrangian you know, one point, not only do we have all of Google, uh, Google Maps being able to show you that everything is modeled on a ball and, hey, where do we know it worked? Not only do we have Soundly's observation, which shows that you can actually see curvature from the ground, not only do we have my observations that show you can see curvature from the ground, not only do we have a rendering to show that with the assumed size and shape of our Earth, that they comport perfectly with both of those observations. Not only do we have observations of the angular size of the sun not changing throughout the day, which it has to on the BS flat Earth, but we also have the pulsar conundrum and the fact that we see ships disappearing over the horizon. We literally have mountains upon mountains of data, some of it from NASA, some of it from people who is just a plumber who is sick of the constant BS from the flat earth community. I know <laughs> who the liars are in this debate. The liars are not uh, NASA, JAXA, SpaceX, ULA, Boeing, or Sierra Nevada Corporation. The liars are people like Jaron, Bob, and all these other dipshits who were quite thoroughly exposed on the uh, Beyond the Curve docu documentary when they said, we need to keep the rotation of the Earth under wraps because it might be bad for us. If you want to call out liars, I recommend you start looking in the mirror and look at your own group before you go out and you tell NASA how they want to spend their money because I tell you, there is no scientific reason why we need a 4K camera placed on the moon filming at 60 frames per second and how would you even transmit that to begin with? You have more faith in the government than I do because the government can't even hide a blowjob, let alone film at 4K resolution <laughs> at 60 frames per second being transmitted with latency, which was an issue and still is an issue to this day, from the moon. You're asking for the impossible. Okay, uh, let me just reply to all that. Uh, I think most of that, what you said, that your viewers won't have a single clue what you are talking about, okay? Because you talk too high for people. See, the average person... It's not that complicated. As, oh. well, it's, it's not that complicated if you're a professor in science, or it's not that complicated if you're a professor in this or a professor in that. Listen, Red is a plumber. Yeah, I'm a plumber. Yeah, okay. <laughs> And if, you went, and if you went to someone's house to fix the sink and come out with half of that stuff, they would wonder if he was part-time scientist or, you know, really a plumber, okay? So let me just point out something as regards having too much faith in the government. You're absolutely correct there. I have no faith in them, okay? Because I know from what I've looked at, what I've researched, what other people are saying, what I can see with my own two eyes, not deceived, uh, not wanting to believe one thing or the other but straightforwardly able to, i mean here's here's just one question for you mm -hmm. do you believe that the footage that nasa showed us from the apollo 11 is 100 percent real and from the moon yes yes how deceived are you honestly uh, i'm Dude, I, and, I, and that's, I and that's the, hang on hang on hang on, hang on hang on hang on and that's the question that i would ask you how deceived do you have to be to look at genuine images of the moon oh. and think it's fake? Oh. Why is it? Why is it that not only not only did they leave retro reflectors on the moon 
But guess what? You can people have actually invited people like you to these telescopes to do these observations. I have personally invited oh, you know flat what? earthers out. Nope. Hang on. Nope. I have I have personally invited flat earthers out to measure the International Space Station's altitude, height, and speed. Yeah. Oh yeah. Guess and guess what? Yeah. None of them show up. The information is on there. You just don't want to accept it. Okay. Your inability to accept it uh -huh. doesn't make it false. So I ask you, good sir, okay. where is the evidence to show that the images that you assert are fake are actually fake? Okay, let, let me point out this again very quickly. Okay, and I said it at the beginning. Okay, hold on two seconds. We can only base our own ideas on the shape of the earth with the information to which we are presented and to which we can verify using our own senses. Uh, an old saying, seeing is believing for, for most, that is at the very heart of the problem, okay? And, and what I'm saying there is NASA has shown me and millions of other people nothing. Okay, well, I yeah. disagree with that. Um, let me ask you a couple of questions. You everything. Let, you let, me, let me ask you just a, a couple of questions. No. First question is, you've got a triangle with sides of one, one, and one. What are the internal angles? One. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're, right, okay, oh, you, you've just shown your intellect to me. The second question that I've got for you is, what Easy experiments group. and observations have you done yourself to prove that the Earth is flat? Okay, Craig, you laughed at that one. I said 60 degrees when I understood the nonsense you're coming out with. Listen, don't don't try and get smart. Because oh, I, I, I will get smart because compared to you, I'm extremely okay, so, smart. So now, the answer the second question. The answer was it 60 degrees? Yes, and you got it right the second time. Now, answer no, the second question. The break, an was... break. Shh, answer this question. What experiments and observations have you done yourself to prove that the Earth is flat? Well, I did a, a little experiment the other day. Uh, and Which was what? Show, ju I'll just tell you. Take a penny, and this is an, an, an easy one that a child can do. Uh, put as many water drops as you want on top of a penny, a 50 pence piece or whatever you want, and see how many times uh, that you can repeat that. Uh, and demonstrate the fact that water has a breaking point, the same as metals, when you heat them, you can bend them. The same as metal, if you try to bend it without heating, it will break because the, the molecules have a binding property. They have a cohesion to one another. Water has a breaking point. It's impossible that trillions of tons through magical wave of a wand gravity that's a theory not a proven fact it is a fact no. don't see, see saying it's, that it's, so water has a breaking point trillions of water do not set up <sighs> right let me explain to you something about fluid dynamics in proof let me explain to you about fluid dynamics all right uh, you don't need to explain yes I, I quite clearly do now listen no, you don't. Water shut up and listen all right Water doesn't bend either. Yes, it does. Uh, what, right. what wait, I, wait, 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 wait. I've, I've, I've got this. I've got this. Oh, right. The basic physics of a wrong. fluid is that oh, it, will, it will react and conform to the forces let, that are acting. Break in. Will let, you shut up when I'm talking, please? Well, the, red was in there as well. I was shh, trying to answer. Will you shush? Red. I am talking. All right. You're being rude now. Shut up when I'm talking. The basic <laughs> physics of any fluid is it will conform or react to the forces acting upon it. Here we go again, the force that's acting upon it. Yes, the force that is acting upon it. And okay. unless you can... Uh, who, who am I answering here? We've got a picture up a Tampa Bay test or something. I have to listen to you or look at this picture. Is this what, to do what with this? picture of Tampa Bay? I don't see a picture yeah. of Tampa Bay. Uh, let, um, let I, I'm, screen, I'm, I'm screen sharing a picture of Tampa Bay. This will be for later. Uh, fight, finish your thought. Okay, right, yeah, you. that, yeah. Um, so... Yeah, fluids conform to the forces acting upon them. They they don't. Like, yeah, I don't know. Sorry, my like wife went out for a second there. Um, we were on about force again on water. Yeah, so oh, the, um, the I can prove that water conforms to forces acting upon it simply by researching oh, um, sonic wait. sonic stop, wave manipulation. Stop! 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 That uh, where you're kind we're kind of off stream. I think. Is it back on? Should I be. See it's back like on. It came back on. 
It came back on. Okay, my apologies. Continue. All right. Yeah. So I can I can prove that water conforms to forces acting upon it simply by searching the term sonic wave manipulation of water. You can see water being moved into different shapes with sonic waves. There's a force acting upon it. It can even be at rest with those forces acting upon it, and it will maintain that particular shape. So, yes, water will conform to forces acting upon it. And we, have already, gone, we have already gone through the fact that there is a downward accelerating force on the planet. So, hey, Ray, can you activate slow mode again? Uh, that'll be reds after that. <clears throat> so, if there's a force, okay. if, and fluids conform to a force, of course, the water can stick to the earth and it's not sticking to it's being pulled towards the center of mass just like everything else on the planet now i have demonstratedly proven to you that mass attracts mass there is more than enough things that you can do yourself to prove that mass attracts mass you said you said yourself earlier on that that was a failed experiment on a bit of, a bit of lycra or whatever it was the guy I, was again using. i didn't say that was an experiment i said that was an, a representation of a 3d phenomenon in a 2d uh, environment yeah, what well, so, i am not talking about that i'm talking about things like the cavendish experiment and hanging simple weights off of a scale you know, ignore that it's that, that silly trampoline thing because as i've said that uh -huh. isn't actually tell a that very to, good tell that to the science guy that's shown all the students that do you think he should be showing them that, that rubbish what, that wasn't I... Einstein. right uh, again whatever that teacher wanted to do that's up to him but me personally i don't think that's a great demonstration because there is so much extra happening there with friction and everything yeah, you cannot get an accurate representation of what an orbit and stuff would be absolutely so making something easy to understand yeah. and a scale model again it's not an experiment it is a, a representation a um trying to show you something that is happening in 3d space in a 2d plane right yeah, uh, about, about like the theory of uh, relativity about relativity like the isn't a theory of space time yeah it's a theory it's never been proven uh, excuse me? Oh, how do you think red, your red, GPS red, so let, works? Let, let me get that. Yeah, um, relativity most definitely has been proven because G GPS um, uses relativity with the atomic clocks on board it to actually know oh. where they are. So um, relativity has been proven in the speed of light and the way it reacts. Relativity yeah. is proven Absolute when you have two garbage. trains moving Absolute at different garbage. speeds. The only, re the only reason Einstein ever came up with one of these theories was to try and uh, disprove that the Earth was a stationary flat uh, thing. That Citation, was please. Sorry? Citation, Citation, please. Citation. Yeah. Okay. I want you to, to prove to me that Einstein came up with something to prove that the Earth was a globe. Several, I, like, uh, I, I like how you use the principles of relativity every time you're lost and need to whip out your phone onto Google Maps. That's yeah. just hilarious to me. No, you, no, you just said a citation. What you're talking about is who's the guy's name? No, no, I want you just said that Einstein said something. So I want citation of that. Yeah, what, you, what you're saying is uh, who is it that Einstein... Listen, Einstein only came up with a theory of space-time or relativity due to the fact that it's an experiment that was done many Citation, years ago. please. Citation, my gosh. You're just saying things. Yeah, I don't need... Listen, I can back up everything I'm saying. No, you haven't backed up a single you thing here today. You haven't, you haven't done that so far. Yeah, be a nice well, change I, of pace. Well, I would disagree with you guys. I would say that... Well, what you, you, you disagree because you, you don't understand physics or maths it. or how to brush your own teeth probably, but... You have, well, there's no need to come down to that sort of level, but we know what your mentality is. Craig. Yeah, my mentality is a thousand times above yours. I will insult you all I want because you are just being absolutely ridiculous and being so disrespectful that you're completely ignoring anything that is being told to you. you no, 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 no. no. Sh I, you shut up right now. Hang on. Hang on. Everyone, everyone mute. Everyone mute. Okay, so let's let's try this. Let's try this. Uh, I'm going to give Craig a chance to say what he's got to say respectfully, and then Break, you will respond respectfully. Uh, I do agree with Break on one thing. Low blows like, you know, 
Yeah, commenting sorry, I'm on getting someone's frustrated on someone's... because I don't like repeating myself I, as I, I I understand this. I understand this. I understand it. Believe me, I understand this. I'm, a, I'm on my second bottle, okay? I understand this. But hey, Grim, you, check the you, internal chat. Look up, pig. I swear to... Anyway, just make sure that you say what you got to say respectfully, and then break will respond. Go. Right. So far, you have not backed up anything that you have said. You, you say that you can back up anything, but you haven't provided proof of anything. You, you've made assumptions about everything. You've made assumptions about CGI. You've made assumptions uh, about basic maths and physics. You've made an assumption about the way that things just fall because with no citations, nothing to back anything up. Everything that I have said to you, I can give you citations. I can prove with maths and physics and practical demonstrations. Every single thing that I have said to you is a 100% fact. Now, I can back up everything that I have said. Why can't you? Listen, as far as I'm concerned, I'm the only one here that's actually provided any images apart from the one Reg just put up on the screen there to show anything. You've provided absolutely zero. What you've done is relied upon the institution's theories, not facts. You've presented nothing whatsoever. To so you're just ignoring my question then. Why can't you back anything up when I can? I've, I've backed everything up I've said. If, uh, but if I've taken stuff, everything that you've shown, I've taken apart. You, you no, haven't you shown anything that I couldn't disprove. Listen, listen, anyone listening over this will see clearly that you have... Anyone wa watching this will see fight, that I've taken fight, apart fight, anything fight, that fight, you have said. Fight, 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 fight. He, he didn't answer my question. I, 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 I know, I know this. Believe me, I'm on your side on that. At the same time, Break wasn't done talking. I, 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 as, as much as it pains me to say this, let him finish. So, like I said, fight. I'll come down on your ass as hard as I will. I will. And yeah, I just I'd love it so, if you answered the question. I, I, I believe me. I, I would. I would love that too. Uh, break. You could finish your thought and let. And when you're done, say I'm done. Go. Thank you, Craig. Can you repeat the question, please? Can you back up anything that you have shown me tonight? Anything. As I said before, most of my stuff is based upon what I have presented to me. And Soon as far as I'm concerned, I'm going to, I'm not done. Carry on. Thank you. Thank you. Most of the stuff that I have looked at is the stuff that has been presented to me through scientists, through NASA, uh, through the institutions that we uh, are meant to believe and trust to provide the trust to us. And as far as I'm concerned, that is the very facts within themselves that disprove the shape of the earth that they are telling us because they're always at, at any point of those images they either doctor them they never show the true image they're all cgi images uh, that is where most of the stuff that that i disbelieve what they say comes from okay and furthermore when i've looked into scientific facts i find that all the facts so-called are based on theories, okay? Uh, not not truth, theories, not proven science, theories. So, but what you have done all night long is tried to read textbooks, okay? You've tried to just pick, I mean, I could go on and I could read loads of stuff for textbooks and fill my brain with all this stuff. And you know, it doesn't matter what I read or what I tell you guys or anybody listening, it's either truth or false, okay? And at the end of the day, I, I, I'm 100% unmoved by what you have said. Wrap it up, please. On the other hand, on the other hand, I'm, I'll try and condense it very quickly. On the other hand, when I listen to Red uh, talking uh, with Jaren, that's the sort of stuff that might uh, make me take a look, I think, at other directions. But, Craig, you've provided nothing. Uh, honestly, you have just simply textbooks to all the way. You're not out there doing field tests yourself. I sympathise with you as regards. I sympathise with you as regards your disability. Uh, I honestly do. But at the end of the day, don't think that you can come on here and sway me. Tell me what's right from wrong when you're basing everything upon simple theories, okay? And they're, and they're not true. All right, not wrap, wrap it up, dude. Come on. End of end of, end of story. 
I'm done. All right, all right. right. Okay, okay. Story. All right. good. Let Fight. me respond. Go. Please let me respond. Please. Right. You are wrong about what a scientific theory is. You are literally changing the meaning of the words scientific theory. You can shake your head all you want, but a scientific theory is... I, right, I don't even know why they use the word theory because a, a scientific <laughs> oh. th theory, as I've said, a scientific theory is very, very, very different from the common vernacular usage of the word theory. Have you ever looked up the definition, the difference in definitions between a theory and a scientific theory? Have you ever yes, actually I looked up those differences? Yes, I have, Craig. What, okay, well, you, you tell me right now. Wait, wait, wait. I'm asking you a question. What is the difference between a theory and a scientific theory? No difference. And you know, well, the there you go. You're very, very, very wrong about that. Question. You asked me a question. No difference because in Google, if you do a Google search and put in top 10 scientific theories and you want a difference between them, but I'm sorry, they're the same thing. No, you're wrong. Theory number one is heliocentrism. Okay, it's the shape of the earth, a ball. It's a theory. Again, you don't know the difference between a theory and a scientific theory, do you? And neither does Google, I suppose. You know, you want to change... Oh, my God. Right. Literally go and Google scientific theory and theory and compare Done the two. It all. Done okay. it all. Hypothesis. Well, then you it. haven't because you would know that there's a difference between a theory and a scientific theory. Gabo, gavel, gavel. Okay, this is this is what I did. I went on Google. I typed it in. Here's what it is: a scientific theory is a well substantiated ex explanation of some aspect of the natural world based on a body of facts that have been repeatedly confirmed through observation and experimentation. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, I'm sorry, you've got the wrong explanation there. Because no, that I is the definition of a scientific theory. The yeah. American Association for the Achievements of Science is wrong on... Th oh, oh, okay, fine. Okay. I, okay. I, need, I need a drink. I'll just, I'll just like, tell seriously, you're, you're coming here with a lack of knowledge on everything. You don't even no, know... No like, like, a, like, sorry, but you've, you've come here to try and debate the shape of the Earth when you don't I even know things like the Cavendish experiment. Oh, wow. So, like, and you don't even know the difference between a theory and a scientific theory. So Craig, how, how can you come here and have a scientific debate when you don't Craig, even know the Craig, definition of a scientific theory? Craig, just because I don't know a couple of things that you've you've pronounced to me, okay, that you as if you created them, okay, as if you are the master at them. Just because, listen, I could have found 20 things to baffle you that you wouldn't have a clue about, but I came yeah. on here as a well, regular I could research on, it and tell you. I came on here as a regular guy to debate the shape of the earth, okay? I've put in my arguments forward. Everyone's heard that, okay? Reds come in on your behalf. Uh, brainy beavers come in on your behalf, okay? That's three against one. As I said, any time, red rhetoric's ready for it, and I'll do plenty of preparation. I'd love to have it out with him because at the end of the day, Craig, you're not even in my league. I am okay? so far above you, it's not even funny. Uh, no, we've, we've all heard how above me you are. You're way, way, above way above you. you. Above yeah, your name. Okay, we can go back to a, a dick okay. uh, measuring contest you want, you want, you, you but wanna, until you, you can you actually do that explain right now? to me what the difference between a theory and a scientific theory is, you don't have the most basic of knowledge to even have this conversation. Great. I'm gonna, Great. I, I'm gonna have to hang on, hang on, gavel. I'm gonna have to apologize to uh, to Craig on this on this one, but we're we're at two hours and twenty three minutes so far. So here's basically the idea that I'm gonna present. Both of y'all say what you got to say, and then we'll end this. However, uh, break, I'm going to be breaking my own rule on this one, but I'll be more than happy to talk to you literally right after all this is done. I will literally kick all of these guys out, and it will be just you and me. How does that sound? What, is that in front of viewers? Uh, yeah, that's in front, front of viewers. As in, you don't leave, I don't leave, the other people leave, and it's just you and me, and we talk about the things that you spoke about here tonight. You okay. don't have to do any preparation, you don't have to do any studying, because apparently you know it all, good. You have files, you have documents, I would very much like to see them, and I'll show you what I have on my side. How's that sound? Uh, I'll tell you how that sounds, as I'll be honest, we read if it was yourself and you was coming on for, I would have been a hell of a lot more prepared. This was at short notice. How much time do you need? Uh, Red, 
I, I couldn't gather the stuff that I'd need to gather tonight. I'm, I am sorry about that. Which is why I'm asking, how much time do you need? Do you need a day, a week, a month, a year? I certainly don't need as long as that. If, if When would be the next time you would be available? Uh, I'm I'm asking for your schedule here. I will work on your schedule. Okay, two seconds. Well, I tell you what, we can we can uh, decide that after it. Let me look the schedule up once me and Craig's finished, and I can certainly uh, tell you that. All right, Craig. Uh, uh, closing thoughts, I guess maybe. And I know that you are going to uh, rip me a new asshole after this is done, and I deserve every bit of it. So, the uh -huh. floor is yours. Okay, the shape of the Earth has been conclusively proven since Aristophanes. There is oh. so many observations that you can make yourself to prove that this is a fact. You keep saying that I haven't done any observations myself, but I've done many things throughout my years of studying and traveling the world that can prove that the Earth is a globe. I have performed the physics experiments to prove that there is a downward accelerating force of 9.8 meters per second. I have um, traveled the world and I have seen the fact that the ocean is certainly not flat. Um, I can, you may call it an appeal to authority or whatever you want, but I can say that the, the pictures from NASA are real because I've got no reason to not think that. I have run some of those pictures that uh, Goddess Engineer showed me a website recently where you can run images through an analysis software to tell you if they have any like marks of being doctored and stuff. And I can tell you that the official NASA images that they say are complete images haven't been doctored. What you've proven here tonight is that you don't have a knowledge of the thing you're actually arguing against. You don't know the arguments of, uh, for gravity. Um, you don't know the you know, traveling downwards at an accelerating, you know, acceleration requires a force. You completely deny the fact that there is a force required for acceleration if it's going down for some reason. Um, so I think we've established here that your knowledge in this field is extremely lacking. You are basing everything you have said on an assumption of images and a mistrust of authority. And frankly, that's a problem that you have. You haven't presented me with anything here that I couldn't take apart in less than a couple of minutes. I didn't need to show pictures and images and stuff because they're already there for me. All the images and everything, all the observations have been done for me to refer to when I need to do. And the images that you've shown today, I've explained to you why they're not what you think they are. And you have not shown me any proof that they are actually doctored in any way. You haven't shown any evidence that the earth is flat. So what we're gonna do here is go with the established scientific consensus and just agree that the earth is a globe. So uh, I think it'd be a good time to do our closing statements, would it not? Yeah, that was my closing uh, statement. I believe, I believe that was his closing statement. Uh, so break, say, say your closing statement, and then we're going to take this off air. I have to drop some information when we're done, right? All right. Okay. Uh, Craig said at the very beginning of this conversation that science doesn't lie. Okay. Go online and have a look at how many times science has got it wrong. Craig's reading from a textbook. He's not reading between the lines. He's accused all night, myself and other people who argue against the shape of the earth, that his signs over our so-called no signs, okay? But the thing comes into question when we know that these scientists, scientists get it wrong all the time. What was 50 years ago is not now. What is now will not be in another 50 years. What, what even this week will not be next week. How many times is science to get it wrong and yet Craig uh, builds his whole idea, his whole concept upon science doesn't lie i rest my case craig there's no hope for you mate until you understand that science has done nothing but get it wrong it's not so much about lies it's about you don't get it right okay and what you're believing now in 10 years time will probably be wrong i rest my case well science doesn't get it wrong you're using the internet right now well, well, well. Rainy, what's up 
so uh, I've got some after show link information to drop. So I'm going to spam that right now as we've been, we want uh, people to jump in and have a nice discussion here. We, we kind of all get in there and we argue and talk and laugh and, uh, you know, whatever. So, and then don't forget to possibly come check out my channel, Red's channel, Fight's channel, and uh, Break, I, I guess you post videos too, do you not? Anyways, uh, check out uh, check out all the different channels and... Uh, We're living on a disc, floating through space with a tiny sun. Oh,